So Billy's got to go mega hardcore common sense. Yeah. Hardcore common sense beats common sense every day. Foot fetish. What about hardcore common sense? What about N NSFW common sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's so common sense you won't even be able to show your, your colleagues. On today's part of my take, we have Chicago Bulls guard Alex Crusoe in studio. Awesome interview with Alex Crusoe. I've been a long time coming. Uh, great talk with him about the NBA, little March Madness talk. Uh, awesome time with him. We're gonna we got a lot of stuff we got to get to. The A's are officially going to Sacramento. The NCAA is trying to stop UConn from getting to Phoenix. We have the Stefan Diggs trade. Uh, and we have Firefest. We got a lot to get to on a Friday show, and it's all brought to you by our friends at DraftKings. The Greens at Augusta will soon host golf's greatest players, and DraftKings is bringing you closer to the action with a major offer to celebrate the tournament. This week, all customers can deposit $10 or more and receive a ticket to DraftKings Millie Maker Contest for a shot at the $1 million top prize. Playing is easy. Assemble a team of golfers while staying under the salary cap. Then sit back as your players score points. Download the DraftKings app and use code TAKES to play free for a shot at the $1 million top prize. Only at DraftKings with code TAKE. The crown is yours when you use DraftKings. So get involved right now. The DraftKings Millie Maker Contest for a shot at the $1 million top prize for the Augusta I, I don't think I can say the name of it. The Augusta hosting the greatest golf players. Mm, yeah. That's what it is. It could be any tournament. It could be any tournament, but go check it out right now with DraftKings. The crown is yours. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take, presented by DraftKings. Download the DraftKings app. Use code TAKE to play free for a shot at the $1 million top prize on uh, the Millie Maker DraftKings contest coming up next week. So go check it out and use code TAKE. Today is Friday, April 5th, and the NCAA is trying to screw the Connecticut Huskies. They're doing everything they can. The The Huskies were delayed on the tarmac. They had a plane issue. Or not on the tarmac. There was a plane that was coming in from Kansas City. Yes. It got delayed. UConn didn't get out to Arizona until early this like morning. Three, four in the morning? Yeah, so they're doing everything. Mayor Pete, he's an Indiana guy. Maybe he's thinking throw the Huskies off. Purdue, they beat him in the championship. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff going on with the NCAA going after UConn. But fortunately for Danny Hurley, he now has the fuel. It wouldn't shock me if Danny Hurley actually oh, delayed that flight. Yeah. False flag. So therefore, he could complain about this. They, but whatever it is, they've got motivation. They they fucked with the Huskies. Uh, I know people are like, oh well, it's two days ahead. That's when that's the most important sleep. Uh, this is the the sleep before the most important sleep, isn't it? I think it's I think it's so. Uh, Jack Mack, our colleague, talked to a sleep expert and said that t when you go through time zones, it's a day per time zone, so three days to get feeling good. And they got there Thursday morning, so they won't feel good until probably Sunday. Okay, because Jim Harbaugh's stance is that it's the night before the night before. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So this would be the night before the night before the night before. But you can't get a good night's sleep the night before the night before if you got all fucked up in your head the night before the night before the night before. It's it's messed up. Yeah. It's messed up. They're trying to take down the Huskies. Um, but, yeah, we're getting ready for the Final Four. We're going to be there uh, in Arizona. So we will be on location. We'll be at the game on Saturday night. We're going to be doing a watch party on Monday night. Are you excited, Hank? Super excited. How many golf games you got planned? Uh, just one. Just playing tomorrow. Just one. We're going to Top Golf too. That's for work, though. Yep. And have That's to do that. Have to do that. And we were talking about maybe squeezing in uh, the Tiger Woods putt putt thing that he has out there. That's more like location scout. Yeah. Or maybe something in the future. Who knows? Oh, and we were also talking. About I wasn't invited to that. When is we that? We haven't, we haven't locked it in. Jeff D. Lowe hit me up. Oh, okay. We were also talking maybe about Sunday. maybe doing a par three, but that's not golf. No. And that's not locked in. Well, neither is Top Golf. It's golf, but it's not golf. It's not golf, but it is golf. It is top golf. golf. 
yeah. So we're gonna be excited. We'll be out there. We'll get we'll get to our picks in a minute. Let's talk about some other things. Uh, the Oakland Athletics have officially announced that they are moving to Sacramento temporarily. Yeah. For I think what is it three years and then a fourth year option something like that. Yeah, so we it's, got we got all types of scumbags we got to go through for this. Uh, we you guys have heard us talk about how much we hate John Fisher, that fucking idiot. Uh, John Fisher got in front of the people of Sacramento and uh, said that he is very excited to be able to watch some of the greatest players in baseball, whether they be athletics players or Aaron Judge and others. Mm -hmm. This fucking dude doesn't know anyone on his team. No, he doesn't. He just wants – he's he's selling the idea of good baseball players will play here, also the athletics that I own will yes. play here. And it's, what, a 10,000-seat stadium? 15, I think. He said it's the most intimate environment in baseball. Yeah, so it's it's official. The, the grounds crew, I think, in, in the Coliseum didn't find – they found out via Twitter. Uh, this was obviously – like it, it felt like it was going to happen, and then it happened officially on Thursday. Uh, we also had uh, Vivek, the owner of the Kings, total scumbag as well, because he bought the Kings to keep the Kings in Sacramento, which was an admirable move. Mm -hmm. And now he's just basically laundering the A's for them and being like, yeah, we'll take you for a few years. It's a halfway home before you go to Vegas. He also had a quote, uh, Vivek, when I bought the Kings, I said that Sacramento would never play second fiddle to any other city. That makes no sense. You're literally playing second fiddle to Las Vegas. And Oakland. And Oakland. He's playing You're getting a temporary third fiddle. team. Yeah. You're... That you just It's just a, a who's who cast of characters of people that you should all hate. And it's ridiculous the way this has been handled from start to finish. Obviously, it's been a clusterfuck. But the, the fact that they have to find a stadium to move to before they move to their new stadium is right. just absurd. Right. To, to like just find a, a, a place that you can crash at, essentially. For th and, and, and it's not just for a season. That's what's crazy. It's like... They're going to be doing. They're going to be doing this for multiple years, staying in Sacramento all the while, trying to design a stadium which actually hasn't been designed yet. Correct. In Las Vegas, it's it's a bad look for baseball. I'm it, gonna I'm gonna say it. Bad look for baseball. Bad look for Rob Manford. Bad look for Rob Manford. Bad look for Vivek, the owner of the Kings, who again, like the hypocrisy of being like we're not going to let uh, someone come in and take the Kings, and then just being the handoff for the A's. Yeah. Total bullshit. So, unfortunately, it feels like this is all going to happen whether we make a stink. I mean, we're small, a small, small piece of all this. It's obviously the city of Oakland. Our goal should just be for the rest of time is just to remind people that John Fisher is a fucking coward, scumbag, loser. Yeah, I'm okay with doing that. And they also, they have locked their... Uh, their tweets, so you can't reply. They did that a while ago. Yeah. But to tweet out being like, we're going to Sacramento and no one can reply, you're cowards. You're cowards and you're losers. And you know what, John Fisher? You're rich, dude. Why don't you have hair? That's a good point. You he's, fucking idiots. He's very, very bold. See, like, this is where we got to take it. I think we just got to take it to the personal level and just be like, John Fisher, bro, you you can't fucking, you, you can't get money for a new stadium and you can't get hair? Yeah, John Fisher, uh, your, your family owned the Gap. Uh, then it looks like your your teeth own the gap right now, bro. Get, get oh, to the dentist. Shit. Why don't no you wonder go to Aaron Judge is his favorite player. See an ortho. The I also didn't realize I was reading up more about John Fisher. He was he bought a piece of the Giants back in the nineties yeah. to keep the Giants in San Francisco. Yeah, he bought the Giants and then he said, you know what, I'm gonna buy the A's so that I can make money. It's a it's a classic case of a guy wanting to prove that he can make money, but the only way he knows how to make money on his own without mom and dad holding his hand is to take mom and dad's money and then buy a guaranteed asset that's going to increase no matter how bad you fuck it up. Yeah. And then you can say, look, I did so I made something of myself. What a it's a classic fail. Fucking story. loser. And I guarantee you, like he should he should have to be quizzed on his entire roster because there's no way he knows his entire roster and i i wouldn't be shocked if he also thinks brad pitt works at his in his facility He's yeah like, where's jonah hill mm -hmm. why well, i haven't seen him in a while yeah it's it's a sad state of affairs in major league baseball right now and there's nothing you can do about it except say because john fisher's a fucking loser for and has no hair from now until the end of time you can remind him that he's bald yeah because guess what that ain't coming back come on the podcast though we won't ask any bald questions. I'll ask one. Actually, you know what, John Fisher, because you're such a broke boy, I will pay for your hair restoration mm. if you come on the podcast. So make that a quote card. John Fisher, it, it should say, John Fisher, because you're a bald fuck, Big Cat will pay for your hair restoration for one appearance on part of my take. I think that's a fair deal. 
That's a fair deal. Because Josh. he's bald. Take it. You because bald. he's bald. You bald bitch. You alopecia, no hair having bitch. How much does that cost? A uh, lot. Like 50 grand. He's really bald. So probably a lot. Yeah. yeah. But all that money's tied up. And his not... suit wasn't even that good. You own the gap. He's got to do a security deposit. It's kind of like baggy. Mm-hmm. Looked like shit. The collar was bad. Yeah. The collar all, was all bad. Time, all, all time collar. Collar was bad. Uh, okay. Other things we got to talk about. Um, Stefan Diggs was traded from Buffalo. Yeah. I think that this uh, probably. Uh, something that had to happen? I would say so. So he was not happy at the end of last season. He was not happy during last season or really ever, it feels like, he was, in Buffalo. It, I think he started not being happy. It was like the playoff loss to the Bengals. Yeah. It was like basically an entire year of not being happy. Yeah, so he's unhappy. He had to leave town. He's making a bunch of money. So they traded him to the Texans. The Texans gave up a second-round pick in next year's draft. Yep. But they also took three years off his contract, I believe. Yep. So he's going to be a free agent. It's a one-year rental. Go back Stephon to Buffalo. Diggs. Maybe, maybe it's coming home. I, I do love this move for the Texans. I think it's a genius move for the Texans. They are basically going all in under C.J. Stroud's rookie contract. This is what a team should do. Yeah. Like, if you're Texans fans, you should be really pumped, especially because C.J. Stroud's not a – like, if if they were drafting a quarterback, like, do you really want Stephon Diggs with a rookie quarterback? That feels like a problem because let's just be honest, Stefan Diggs is an awesome football player, but if you get traded twice in your prime, there might be, it might be you. Yeah. It might be you. This is also a, a great business move on, on uh Stefan Diggs's part. Cause he's going to get to be a free agent again. Yeah. And he's going to get paid again. And it's, it's good if you're a Texans fan too, cause going into this off season, you were probably thinking like best case scenario, we get maybe T Higgins. Yeah. If he doesn't get tagged, T Higgins gets tagged. And you're like, well, fuck, that was kind of the big name that was out there. Now you got a better player than T. Higgins. And they have an awesome receiving core. They're all in. I I mean, the I just love that a team is being proactive with the fact that like CJ Stroud, outside of Mahomes, is probably the most valuable quarterback in the NFL next year. The guy that you would want to build around the most. Well, no, yeah. not even not even like talent wise. Mahomes is Mahomes because he's Mahomes. Like you can just win with Mahomes no matter what. But I'm saying like CJ Stroud talent plus contract yeah. is 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 probably number two. If you had to pick a quarterback and all contracts matter, you'd still take Mahomes one even though he's getting a lot of money. I think you'd probably take C.J. Stroud two because you're like, oh, I can build everything else up and we have three years, four years here where he's not going to get paid this max money. It also marks a very big change in the, the Houston Texans philosophy. For years, they were great at drafting. They've always drafted great players. But then they trade their players. Yeah. Or they let them go. Yeah. They never really bring in big name outside free agents. This is now like a, a complete uh, 180 turnaround from what the Texans have done. It feels like for the last 10 years. Yeah. So they're actually going out there. They're, they are being proactive. They got um, mixed net running back, right? Yep. Who I guess that's fine. I, yeah. I think he's a, a pretty good running back. Uh, and then you they got Nico Collins. Nico Collins, Tank Dell. Tank Dell. And they got Stephon a good, Diggs. A defense that's young and getting better. Credit to uh, coach. Nick Casario. Good job, Nick. I'm talking myself into the Texans. Yeah, well, that's the other thing is now we have to, we know who the team is going to be this offseason. Yeah. Where it's the trendy pick of a team that uh, they're going to say, like, who's your dark horse? The Texans. They shouldn't be a dark horse. They should be They should be a pale horse. They mm-hmm. should be, like, the team that everybody should be focusing on. But everyone's going to talk this offseason. Like, my surprise pick for next year is the Houston Texans. Yeah. And now for the Bills um, – the Bills are not better without Stefan Diggs. That's just a fact. Like, they're not a better football team when Stefan Diggs is not on their team. But they had to do something, not only because of Stefan Diggs, but they've been in a cap hell where they went all in the last few years. And, you know, even that Chiefs, like the Chiefs have rebuilt on the fly with Mahomes and got younger. The Bills were a very old roster, had to make some tough decisions, had to cut some players, had to trade Stefan Diggs. I know people will get upset about this, but I still think that if you have Josh Allen, you still have a shot. Yeah. I know. And people are like, this is so stupid. But like the, that they when you have a franchise quarterback, you have to reset and overturn your roster a couple times over. The Bills should be criticized for going all in with this older team that wasn't able to win a Super Bowl. But now this is the reality. They have to they have to hit their hard reset. They have to make some tough decisions. They can't miss on the draft. But that's just the reality of it. And even still, if you're a Bills fan, as doom and gloom as it might seem to trade De- Stefan Diggs, you have Josh Allen, and if you draft well, you'll still have a shot. Yeah, so with Josh Allen, he's probably going to be running the ball a lot at the start of next year until he can like establish who his receivers are, who he trusts. 
Um, maybe Gabe Davis. Maybe he plays every game like he it's played. Not on the Bills. Anymore. Not on the Bills anymore. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. So you knew that. I did know that. But he basically wasn't on the Bills for seventy five percent of the game. Yeah, that's season true. Too. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Shakir is their number one right now. Okay, so they well, and they also have they still have Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox. That's true. They've Curtis got Curtis Samuel and Matt Collins. Curtis okay, Matt Samuel. Collins. Curtis Samuel's nice if you like doing pop passes and reverses and shit like that. They draft twenty eighth. Uh, so I don't know if they're going to look to add a wide receiver. It is a deep they, wide receiver class. Yeah, Polk from Washington. He'll be there. I don't know. It's just like it's one of those. It's a hard reality. It, it sucks if you're a Bills fan because Stephon Diggs didn't work out, but I think you had to move on because it was not tenable. And now you have to be like, all right, here comes the hard reset. Here comes a couple of years where Josh is going to have to be superhero, and hopefully they're able to nail some draft picks and and get a young roster around. Josh Allen, who will still play for a long time. And getting a second round pick next year is not bad. No. Like, that's a decent haul. There's there's not very many players outside of quarterbacks that would be worth a first like first round pick. The the only issue is they probably waited to a point where it was clear that they needed to get rid of Stefan Diggs, so their hands were tied a little bit. Like, yeah. it was clear they had, like, you never want to be in a negotiating spot where everyone's like, oh, they really don't want him on the team anymore. Maybe, maybe a deal that should have been done last year. Yeah. One year too late. When you still had a Gabe Davis on your team. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe bring Cole Beas Beasley back. I don't know. I, I feel like Bills fans understand the reality of it that, like, you just – this is what happens when you have to pay your all-world quarterback. Yep. And now you now you got to start making some good moves and some cheap moves and, and hopefully guys step up. I'd, I'd say it's a it's a win-win for both teams. I did too. Just, I just think Stephon Diggs was, like, he was causing – like, we talked about the Diva receivers. He's number one right now. Yeah, the Instagram king. Yeah. The Instagram complete. There's so many players. I'd never understand why players do this. Why they like post something extremely inflammatory on social media on Instagram on like their story, and then they delete it after like an hour. Yeah, and then they act like it didn't happen. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I didn't know. I, my phone got hacked. Yeah. It was good though to see a big NFL trade. Yeah. The never happened. Flowing. Never happened. They did. They did. The Bills did sign uh, Leo Collins. So that was nice. Okay. Cool. Cool. Someone to protect. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Good. Good. But uh, you know what I'm saying? Like Josh is probably over the course of last year he started to run the ball more and their offense they started to win games yeah when they kind of played into those strengths i think he's going to go back to that at the start of next year especially if he doesn't have these dynamic downfield receivers so it is funny though watching some fan bases be like that's the death of the bills i i think that it's as long as you have a if you have a top five quarterback right. on your team you're never dead and i think that because mahomes is so great everyone behind Mahomes gets diminished to a point where you're like, yeah. I think a lot of teams would still want Josh Allen. I want to start keep keeping track too of all the teams that go all in and still end up losing to Mahomes. Yeah. It's the thief of joy. He's the thief Every, of joy. There are going to be so many teams that go all in. They're like, now's our chance. That's the last and then Mahomes just keeps beating them. Yeah. That's the last level of greatness. Like being great is one thing, but then when you get to that last level of greatness, Brady Mahomes, you know, MJ in the nineties where it's like, you can actually point, and be like, he took at least a couple Super Bowls from this guy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Peyton Manning would probably have three Super Bowls if it wasn't for – or four Super Bowls if it wasn't for Tom Brady. Yeah, the Niners, they were all in. Yeah. Stole their joy. Texans are going to try to go all in. Seems like there's a lot of teams out there. The Dolphins. Ravens. Dolphins. The Ravens have been all in. Although they lost a lot in free agencies. Yeah. They'll go all in again. Yeah, they'll figure out a way to go all in. The Chargers – all in. The Bears are going to go all in. Do you see Caleb Williams was in Chicago? No, Bears are kind of all in. He, 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 he went out to dinner. He went out to dinner with some players. He stopped by the facility, I heard. Yep. So. It'd be funny if they didn't draft him. If they're like, we didn't like his order. I mean, I'm going to paint my nails for draft night. So if he doesn't, if we don't draft him, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, no, you guys are going to draft him. <laughs> that's going to be a real problem for your boy. It's going to go Williams number one, and then who knows? Now we're in the, the thick of mock draft season where people are doing new mock drafts just so that they can have a different quarterback going at number two. Yeah. So people will click on it, and then they'll change it again right before the draft. Are you a little worried about Jaden Daniels' uh, elbow? Uh, it's he's got a freaky fucking elbow. That thing is weird. He's got a, it, he's got like a three inch protrusion on his elbow. What, <laughs> well, elbow's not fine. Is, is elbow important for a quarterback? Uh, nah. no, not the bursitis that he has. So obviously, I did a deep dive on what the fuck is on his elbow. Because if that if I'm gonna be rooting for that elbow, I want to know what's going on. You're gonna have to get intimate with that elbow. I might have to just hit my my elbow like you're painting your nails. Yeah, I might just bash my elbow against a, a take table a hammer to your elbow until I get a, a dick that grows out of the end yeah. of my arm. No, you can't. You can't be nervous. I, I'm not nervous. He said he's fine. Yeah, everyone says it's fine. It's fine. It's a completely normal elbow. It's fine. To, uh, it's a fine looking elbow. It's a good elbow, Hank. So it's a coincidence that it's his throwing arm. 
Well, you might end up with Jaden Daniels. Yeah, it's bursitis. No, I'm trying to find out more. I, I I didn't understand. Like it seems. Read a book, Hank. It's bursitis, dude. How does one acquire bursitis? By being too good at quarterback and winning a high. Throwing trophy. too much. But it's not a concern. By dominating people. Yeah, you got to get rid of it by throwing less. What happens if it gets worse? Oh wait, so wait, Hank. So uh, the other quarterbacks in this draft, the one that you're looking at right now, we're looking at Drake. All. Drake May. All you're looking at Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Do they do they have bursitis? No, it sounds like they don't throw footballs that much. Jaden Daniels has bursitis because he practices so hard. Yeah, that's a guy I want on my team. Fact. Yeah, I'm not going to bash him. I hope we get him. So the new money ball is drafting a quarterback with a fucked up elbow that looks like a modern art sculpture. Mm-hmm. Did you guys see? Uh... Harbaugh's strength and conditioning coach, who is a Badger, Ben Herbert. Yeah, see his uh, his pre or introductory press conference. No, oh my god, I'll just play one little clip from it because it 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 made me want. I actually think that we should hire a strength and conditioning coach here. Like, I kind of want someone to come and like kick my ass. But let me let me play this one clip. Hold on, and a get back guy that just holds Mincy off from stepping in front of yeah. cameras. Yeah. All right, here it is. This is philosophy. Stopping on him from having conversations in the office. <laughs> this fire you up. Training is that. I don't know if there's two people that view it the same. Uh, there are concepts that different people believe in that may match up, but I view training in this way, and this is how I told it to the guys. Uh, my g- first goal is to make you harder to break. <laughs> yep, that's it. People often may say, just make you harder to break. This is also a great quote from uh, from Harbaugh today. So he said, the back is just an untapped gold mine of lean muscle mass. Ooh, I like that. I love that, too. Uh, it does sound like he's looking at players like he wants to eat them. Like he's evaluating a, a cut of venison. Yeah. Like that's that's such a gold mine. I'd like to see, sink my teeth into that. But his whole point is that uh, if you have a strong back, it supports your neck. Yeah, that's what. And then your neck supports your brain. Yeah, Ben Herbert said that we're like we're, the first thing I showed them was trap exercises to support their brain. He also yeah. talked about emotional uh like intelligence and i just love this is the most like intense dude ever here's what he said meaning oh coach herb got the juice today he's feeling good he's happy he's excited well then it rains and i feel a certain type of way or i I told the guys i have a wife two boys two dogs i have a car with four tires if i get a flat tire i'm not going to take it out on you if something happens i don't change emotionally when i walk in the facility who you know me to be is who I am. Same guy all the time. All the time. Yeah. It doesn't matter if his wife's mad at him. Yeah. And just so we're clear, he's got two dogs, two kids, wife, four tires. Mm-hmm. Right at the same level. All those matter, just <laughs> the same exact. And he's also tougher than the weather. Yeah. He's, he's like, if it rains, I'm not going to... I don't know anyone who who's tougher than the weather. If it's if it's shitty out, you are you feel shitty. He's tougher than the weather. I like that. Uh, he's going to be a force. I, I can't wait for Harbaugh to just do his press conferences. Just We get all of Harbaugh NFL content all yeah, the time. because he doesn't have to be as careful, too. He doesn't. Uh, I hope he cheats, too. I hope he brings some of that extra spy shit to the NFL. Yeah. Um, all right, last thing I had was Tiger Woods isn't having sex. Isn't that what you'd say if you were having a lot of sex? Well, at first, the headline was like Tiger. What was the actual headline? Because it looked it was like from his friend. It looked like Tiger Woods' penis actually wrote the story. So he's focusing on winning the Masters by not having sex. Yeah, Tiger Woods has eliminated sex while training for the Masters. Well, it's until only recently that golfers have even started having sex. He, I, like back in the nineties, golfers were nerds. Isn't this? But didn't Tiger win when he was having sex? That was I, when he was Tiger. Tiger was at his best when his. But he hurt his back. Yeah, he, but that was also because he tried to be a Navy SEAL. But he also got his back blown out. That too. But Tiger was winning championships. He was winning majors when his when like the uh, the grip of his putter smelled like absolute shit from yeah. his hands. Perkins the, waitresses. The dirtier Tiger was, the better. Yeah. Golf. When he was getting it in the hole. Now he's gonna not do. Maybe he just can't have sex because he like he can't walk. Maybe. Uh, there's always like before the World Cup. There's always one. Like Brazilian soccer manager that says like I've had my guys not having sex for three months now. Yeah, they're ready to go. I feel like I don't know if Tiger. I I want Tiger to be competitive, but if he doesn't play well after he spent the entire like month not having sex, he's going to have so much sex. Yeah, for the next Masters eliminating sex though it just feels like the wrong thing for Tiger to do. He needs to he needs to be having sex. I of the Tiger. I want my Tiger fucking. Yeah. I want him just loose. Yeah, and the more he fucks, the more Charlie Woods's we have. 
who's next up. Next up. Next up. All right. Do we have anything else before we talk? Maybe a little picks on uh, Final Four. Any other any other stories going around? Uh, congrats to the Celtics for winning the Eastern Conference. That now, officially now happened. That, now that the Knicks have uh, yeah, we clinched the best record in the NBA. Nice. Yeah. Julius Randle not going to play anymore this year, so I think they were about fifty. They were about five hundred with him out of the lineup. But people were saying if he comes back, they could be the ones that could threaten the Celtics in the East. So who, who is this exactly? Julius Randle maybe also just was like, I don't want to, like last year went so bad. Yeah. Maybe I just don't want to deal with this. Yeah, there's just nobody in the East at all. Am I, am I somebody forgetting else came you, back. teams? Oh, oh somebody who's else that? came back? Somebody else came back. What do you think about Joel Embiid wearing Skechers, Max? Who cares? They're sneakers. Oh, okay. All right. You want your guy wearing the, the best gear. I want my guy well-supported from whatever company will support him the best. Okay. Skechers just doesn't seem like, like that's a skateboarding brand. No, yeah, you can think that. I will. You okay. can think that, okay. yeah. Right. You're, you're entitled to your own opinion. He okay. came back Sixers without Maxi, beat the Thunder. They, they were without Shea Gilders, <laughs> Alexander. But Sixers are back. Okay. Uh, by the way, Max, I forgot to say congratulations to the Villanova women for finishing third in the NIT. Second. No, WBIT. The, oh, WBIT. Oh. So what, it actually doesn't count as a real second because it was not even the second no, tournament. No, that is Well, we the had second. a debate. There's a WNIT and a WBIT. We the don't WBIT, know which one is better. Yes, we do. The WBIT is better. So, so the you finished second in the second place tournament. Yes. In the you second finished place second tournament. in the second place tournament. Correct. Wow. It, like, this is what... Yes. You're just a walk... Yeah, you're just... It's kind of like when you buy a car and then all of a sudden you see your car everywhere. You're like, oh, man, I didn't know how many people had this car. As soon as Max finished second once, we just started noticing. It's like he finishes second everywhere. All the time. Everywhere. But like that, Anywhere you a, look, he's finishing second. That's a bad example because when you buy a car and you notice that car everywhere, it's not like there's a ton of those cars. We, it's just that you notice some more. It's like the con whatever kind of bias that is. With Max, it really just opened our eyes to it. Yeah, and then people were all – like the Little League video – we put out the other day, I finished second in that oh, tournament. Oh, no. So I didn't know that. So people were reminding me of that the other day. Yeah. Oh, man. Dave nice. and Buster's commercial we did. You That's finished true. second? Yeah. yeah. The in science that? science fair, finished second. Fuck. Hey, yeah. memes, do we have I was a, excited for that second. Do we have an update on Mr. Pear? People want the Mr. We want Mr. Pear bad. Yeah, I'm going to try to get it next week. Okay. Get him. Get him. Get him, him Mr. Pear. Not it. I'm either getting a tortoise that we're just going to call a turtle. Here's what I'm worried about with the tortoise, though, memes. I'm told that tortoises can live like 20, 30 years. Yeah. But I would feel bad if a turtle tortoise, excuse me, died after like six months if its lifespan was supposed to be 30. That was my number one worry about this from the start. Yeah. Now, if it's just a turtle and it does bad, we'll we'll rip that shit up like, uh, what was the turtle that was at Florida State? Turtle? Yeah. 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 We'll tear that turtle in half. If he stinks. Turtle got ripped in half by, uh, what was it? Aguayo. Aguayo brothers. Yeah. Yeah, one of the Aguayos. So you're going to get it next week? I'm going to try to get it next week. Maybe make a match. All right, so that means we're not going to get it next week. Um, But, yeah, wait, so you're going to get a tortoise, or what's the other option? Uh, I was speaking to a, a zookeeper. He said uh, get a box turtle. They're easier to take care of. And will he? will a box turtle actually make picks for us? I think so. It eats pears. It does eat pears. That's good. Mr. Pear. Oh, Mr. Pear. Oh, Mr. Pear. Mr. Pear. You could just make the longest videos of him like walking around the studio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are you going, Mr. Where Pear? Going, He's going to be a superstar. Yeah. I just love the idea of us just doing the entire weekend preview and Mr. Pear is like, oh, he just made his second pick after 45 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> That's what we should do, too, with Mr. Pears. We shouldn't. We shouldn't be like Mr. Pear has to do five picks. Mr. Pear should just get to do as many picks as he can do. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Let's not put so much pressure on Mr. Maybe Pear. Maybe he just likes one game. Yeah. We'll just give him the option. Yeah. We Mr. Pear's game of the week. Yeah. Mr. Pear. Oh. And what are we going to put? We're going to put pears out for him to eat or remotes? Uh, I think pears. Okay. Maybe we'll do one, pears. one pear, Mr. one pear, remote. Mr. Pear. No chewing gum? Mr. Pear. No, okay. I can't wait for Mr. Pear. All right, let's uh, let's do some picks for Final Four. So, Uber Eats when turning in when tuning into every Final Four game all weekend long, turn to Uber Eats for all your delivery needs. Uber Eats is more than just food from your favorite restaurant. 
I'm talking groceries, convenience items, and alcohol. Whether you need dog treats, chips and dip, power to, uh, paper towels, or beer, or maybe all four, Uber Eats can deliver almost almost anything. Get grocery, alcohol, and everyday essentials in addition to the restaurant food you love. So in other words, get almost almost anything with Uber Eats. Order now. For alcohol, you must be legal drinking age. Please enjoy responsibly. Product availability varies by region. See app for details. What are we guys feeling? What are we guys feeling? I love... I love UConn. I already I there there will be no bet on that game for me because I have UConn, and I want so much. I want to right. elect to abstain from from betting on Purdue NC State. Mm. I'll put it that way. The DJ Burns shirts we just put on sale are, are so far that I I have to bet NC State money line. Yeah, I have no choice. Incredible. You know what? Fuck and, it. And rooting for Purdue is just so so it's so fun to root against them. I just have to do it. So the reason why I wanted to abstain was Look at these because things. I am so convinced that Zach Eady is just going to have his way with NC State, but I'm also very stupid. So since I'm so sure that Purdue is going to dominate, I should just bet on NC State. Yeah, I, I just don't know how you can't, like, if you're impartial, if you don't have a team or bet on these this Final Four, the answer has to be NC State. Like, you have to, I, I, and I... They're perfect because the 83 title run is so similar to this run where you're like, maybe it just is destined. Yeah. Maybe this is just what's going to happen, and they're going to shock the world, and this is going to be the craziest three-week, four-week run in history. That's what I said before the Duke game. I was like, are you a little worried if NC State wins that they're No, UConn destiny? would smash them. But. So smash them. They can beat Purdue. I am a little worried about Alabama, though, because Alabama could just go nuclear from three. You want to know what I'm betting that game? What? Alabama. Bama money line. Oh, of course he is. No, I'm not. Uh, UConn to win by one to two. Oh. Oh, exactly. Just, just That's for chaos. That's crazy. That would, we're going, we're going to be with with Dave and, and Big Cat, who have huge, huge futures bets on UConn. Rico, diehard Alabama fan. That would be the best content if it ended up with that s- scenario. Yeah. Because if it's a blowout, it would, it would lose its luster but yeah. if it's close to the end be it be quite a quite a scene i am enjoying watching alabama fans like game plan for this game and i saw one guy was like they're like we got to just uh force the ball to cling in and caravan and let caravan shoot threes caravan's shooting 40 percent from three yeah force the ball to 40 percent to two, to two great players yeah like they have just great players everywhere and i don't really know what the answer is to UConn other than the stra- their sleeping schedule is fucked up. The strategy in this game for Alabama is just be Alabama and then hope you have the best Alabama night that you can. Because you, if they do play their best basketball, they definitely can win this game. Shoot 60% from three. Yeah, like that's the thing is I'm not – I don't give – I'm not saying that Alabama has zero chance. They definitely have a chance because of the style they play. Mm-hmm. And if they hit all their threes, anyone could lose to them on any night. But uh, UConn is just a kind of a – there's levels, and they're just at a different level right now if they come out and play. Like, UConn would have to play, what, a C-minus game to give Alabama a chance? Like, if I think about – if UConn plays a B game, they beat everyone. Yeah, I, I, I'm i going to take Connecticut minus 11.5, and, and then I'm going to take NC State money line. Ooh. And we'll let the chips fall where they may. I I uh, I want to just shout out the women's game, too, real quick. I kind of like UConn on Sunday. Okay. I, I, I scouted I scouted that UConn USC game. They had a very good plan for Juju Watkins. I think they'll have a very good plan for Caitlin Clark. Let everyone else beat them except Caitlin Clark. So yeah, I think that's I think that's what my plan is for Sunday. I think that that the powers that be Or no, Friday. That's Friday. Sorry, that's Friday. Sunday is the championship, the championship. game. I think the powers that be really want Caitlin Clark South Carolina championship. Yeah. They really want that. Star player against a perfect team. That would what ratings higher or lower than what than LSU Iowa lower in that championship game yeah you think so yeah uh, I just think LSU Iowa is going to always have the highest ratings of the tournament just because of last year it was the highest rated women's college basketball game ever I think highest rated women's game ever yeah across Sunday the board. is ABC hmm. yeah that's true I think it would be higher afternoon. I think I think Clark against undefeated USC would be higher yeah. You mean, yeah, yeah, South Carolina, yeah. Yep. Uh, and they got, what, 12 point what? 4 million? 12.4 million? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. And Rasul only watched a half. It, the funniest was <laughs> when every, everybody so was much. talking about the uh, the LSU-Iowa game, and then Rasul tweeted something out about, like, 
uh, some NBA player not it's getting enough rebounds. He gets people so angry. I like it because it breaks up the timeline a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and he gets yeah. he does that every now and then where there'll be like a big football game and he'll and he'll just randomly tweet like yeah, Blue Jays like like Manoa shouldn't have left that one hanging. <laughs> Nah, people should be able to tweet about what they want to tweet about. Agreed. I was tweeting about the I Phillies agree. during that game, and no, every, every single Rosillo. comment was like, read the room. It's Everyone's talking about college. Agreed. We're, I, we're defending Rasillo. He just makes everyone so mad. I know. Like I, he, had, he makes people so mad. It's like, like what you like. Who cares? But he only watched half. Yeah. Uh, who scored 50 points in the NBA yesterday? Was it uh, Ma- Malachi? Yeah. Malachi Flynn. Malachi yeah. Flynn scored. Fi- that might be the the moment where we all realize like scoring is is out of control in the NBA right scoring now. Scoring is pretty crazy. It is. Congrat, Hank. You are, you feel you were saying before that there's a zero percent chance you don't make it to the finals. I don't know that I said zero percent chance, but uh, it would be it would be heartbreaking if they don't. Big Cat put a future on the Nuggets, and I was like, "That's a little." Offensive. Well, no, I. You're put like, well, it's different. Ah, uh, hold on. I put a future on Scotty Scheffler in the Nuggets, so it might not even be. A thing, yeah. It was. I put it was, a future on Brooks Scotty, and the Celtics. It was. But that's Scott, just me. Well, I also put a future on Brooks, but they, it was a Scotty Scheffler and Nuggets. I put a you, future. You on left that part out. You left that part out. So he's not even going to be rooting for the Nuggets unless Scotty wins. Correct. But and I don't Scottie, want Scotty to win. I want someone else to win. But I think Scotty's playing so well that he's going to win. But I don't want him to win. I'm only. Does that make sense? Yeah, but you could have just done Scotty and the Celtics. Why? <laughs> because- everything you've done. He doesn't think the Celtics and everything you've done. No, I think they absolutely could win. But for you want you like everything you've done to me. Let's get a reason to root against the Celtics. Boom, got it. Oh my god, I got UConn. This is why Nuggets. Why I should have seen more mad at Hank MVP. Fucking beat. So I fair warning, Hank. But again, I am a long time Nuggets (laughs) podcast. He is. That's fine. He's a Nugs guy. Been through it before. I'll go through it again. What are you going to say, Max? I'll be rooting against the Celtics <laughs> for sure. Um, I won't feel bad about it, and I want your pain, like, bad. That's, that's fine. You can taste it yeah. on your lips? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not okay with pretending. That. You're, not, that's you're just... not fake. You're not fake. Yeah, you're no. a real one. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is setting up for Hank to defeat Max. Wait, how am I fake for not betting on your team? No, you just like to be like, oh, it's a coincidence I bet on the Nuggets. No, I think oh. they're going to win the... Why would I bet on something I don't think is going to happen? How do you solve the Jokic riddle? Yeah, what? I I think that's going to happen, so that's what I bet. That's fine. Listen, so what I'm you looking want me to? Forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I don't know how that's that's what I think is going to happen. You do that all the time. I also don't think you're looking forward to it. I think you're scared of the Nuggets. No, Back the Nuggets are good. The Nuggets will be the Nuggets will be a, a worthy test if the Celtics can make it that far, and the Nuggets too as well. But I'm super excited. I think it's what is it, April twenty second. Playoff start, can't wait. Yeah, mm-hmm. very excited. Don't sleep on the Sixers. Sixers, no, we're sleeping on the Sixers. Don't sleep on the, Sixers. Don't sleep on the Heat. I'm going to uh, sleep. Uh, the switch. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. Also, he, be he at the Sixers it. game next week. Oh yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, we'll talk about that next week. Okay. I was I was thinking about setting it up as my firefest, but yeah, next week. All right. Well, let's talk more NBA. We got Alex Crusoe on the show, uh, in studio. Awesome interview. It's brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. Oh, do you have the chill calendar? From day-to-day annoyances to the big stuff life throws your way, it's easy to get worked up, but there's a better way, a chiller way. Turn that canceled concert into a parking lot dance party. Too cold for an ocean swim, play volleyball, and light a a bonfire instead. That's choosing chill. And When you choose chill, reach for a Coors Light. When the mountains turn blue, it's as cold as the Rockies. When you choose to rise above it all, choose chill, choose Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. What day do we have? 13. All right. Lucky 13. And oh, he nailed it. So easy. He nailed it. Look at this. Well, oh, it's day 13. Sick. You could probably use some exercise by now. Hoop it up from the comfort of your bar stool. Work off bracket and do stress. Regain confidence because nothing makes you feel like a big man more than a two-foot hoop. Got a little mini basketball hoop here with a ball. That's sick. Love it. Coors Light. Best beer out there. Choose Coors Light. Choose Chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with the Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Okay, here he is, Alex Caruso. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. Long time coming. It is the man, the myth, the legend, Alex Caruso. Chicago Bull. Uh, Should we do the hard part first? Yeah, sure. Okay, because I was going to say NBA champion, but we don't. 
uh, think that. Oh, you don't recognize count. it. Yeah, we don't recognize uh, okay. it. So let's yeah. just do the hard part first. Let's just get it out of the way. Yeah, Mickey yeah. Mouse. Bubble championship didn't count. La okay. bubble. Sure. How, what? How do you do? You, what do you say to that? Um, gotta still play the games. <laughs> gotta still show up and win the games. So I mean, uh huh. There's something to play for, you know, like the NCAA tournament. Yeah. You know? I mean, it happened. I'll say this: it did happen. It so did what's happen. what's what's the argument for the? The argument the is that invalid. LeBron LeBron won a yeah. championship, and so <laughs> gotcha. it didn't count. Okay. So actually, we're fine with letting you be my championship. Champion. Yeah, yeah uh-huh. you're okay, an that's cool. champion. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with that. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, he's got a couple that you know. Yeah. Are yeah. real, so the the fake one. Three. Yeah. Also, uh, uh, what, are you the first Italian American all defensive player in the NBA? Is that is I that what we y- declared y- last y- year? Y- talked about this. Yeah. Did, yeah, I think. Danilo so. never I don't, got I don't one. think. Uh, I don't think the other white guy that was a guard that made all defense was Italian. So I think that has to be. It has to be you. Yeah. yeah. So wait. So talking about the bubble championship because obviously we're joking, but not really because we don't really count it for LeBron. Um, do you think back and you're like, man, I kind of wish that we had won that in like regular setting because it feels felt a little different. It, I would say just for the just for like the. Like all the extra stuff that comes with it, right? You know, like being able to celebrate with fans afterwards, being able to have a parade, um, having the energy of like the final second countdown. You know, like yeah, it like it, it would have been different having yeah sixteen thousand people it's, in the arena, regardless of home or away. Just yeah, to have that kind of atmosphere. I mean, it still is like incredible that you guys did it because it was very hard circumstances. Oh so, yeah, three three and a half months basically a summer and then you come back and just start playing again yeah yes yeah. were you were you ever at any point being like i really just want to go home I, i'm sick of living in disney world yes but no you know like it was kind of like it, it i've seen like multiple takes right there's like both sides of the spectrum some people are like it's the hardest thing ever blah, blah, blah. and then some people are just like yeah like it was you know a hotel and we stayed there i don't have kids you know at the time i wasn't in a relationship so like for me, it was like college again. Like I was yeah. just like going to practice. I would go play golf. I'd go back, get some food, play Call of Duty, and then wake up and go play basketball the next day. Like for me, it was like this is not not terrible. That's a pretty good life. Yeah, yeah. like I think yeah. people would. Yeah. Some people would would take playing Call of Duty golf and then going to play in the NBA playoffs. <laughs> like I think some people would like that. But yeah, what was the vibe like in there? Like were you guys hanging out with other teams, or did you guys mostly just keep to yourselves? No, yeah, it was like it was like clicks. Like everybody was with their own team. Um, some people like turned their meeting rooms into like players' lounges, like had ping pong tables and stuff. But for the most part, we were a pretty close group all year. Like we we hung out you know, one through 15 on the roster. So it was easy for us to hang out once we got there. Yeah. Were you allowed to buy coffee from Jimmy Butler or was that just for his teammates? I don't know. That's a good question. I never tried. I didn't, I'm I'm a little bit of a coffee drinker now, but this has really Air come from, on in the last like Air year, from, year yeah. and a half. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I'm, so I'm always coffee. like a, just take a shower and go yeah. kind of guy, but recently coffee. Uh, I don't know. I don't think he would have sold it to us. He would have poisoned it probably. Yeah. He's he would have done something to it. He, he would have like put some eye drops, the little, uh, yeah, dumb and dumber. Yeah. yeah. Easier question: Do you think the Suns would have let you hang out with them? No, probably not. Still, <laughs> yeah. Would you have wanted to hang out with the Suns? <laughs> <laughs> I would say no to that as well. Yeah. Smart answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I, yeah, I'm pumped that you're here. Like I said, it's been a long time coming. Got a million questions, but I, I was just going back through like your career, and it's incredible. Like seeing that you, you know, four years of college, and then the G League. And then getting to a point where you sign a huge deal, win a championship, sign a huge deal, become like a very impactful part of like an NBA roster. Was there any part of like that journey where you're like, fuck, I was pretty close to like not making it to where I wanted to do? Because not a lot of guys do that journey. You know what I mean? Not a lot of guys are on that same path. Yeah. I I don't know if there was any point in time where I was like, oh man, like this might be it. But at the same time, like that's kind of what kept me you know, on my P's and Q's and like on like top of my game to like make sure that when I got the opportunity, I took advantage of it because I was like, all right, if I don't play good, like I'm done. Like, right. Uh, you know, if I don't play good in the G League, I'm not going to be able to get to an NBA team. If I don't play good in college, I'm not going to be able to, you know, go to the G League. So, or professional. Um, so it was always kind of like, I was, I was almost like a, like a racehorse. Like I had blinders on, but yeah. at the same time, like I understood, you know, what, what the stakes were. Yeah. I was playing. 
Yeah, and is it like that still now where it's like you, you have in the back of your mind, if I don't work hard enough, this all could be over? Yeah, I mean, that's that's that that's probably the cool thing about it is like at first it was like, all right, I got to work hard and I got to play my ass off so I can get into the league or get into this spot to get into the league. And then, you know, like you said, like now I've kind of established myself and it's to the point to where like I'm a coveted asset and it's it's now the point to where it's like, all right, that's the standard I have for myself. Like I can't drop below that, you know, and water down, you know, everything that I've worked for or, you know, throw away the, the work that I've put in. Um, I just, I just really enjoy being competitive with myself. And that's kind of like the best part about it. Like I'm just constantly chasing. What, what was the moment where you're like, Oh shit, I am a coveted aspect because it's crazy that not only did you obviously sign a great contract, but when you left the Lakers, I feel like Lakers fans were so upset. Yeah, that you were no, not on still the team. Yeah, they're like they pissed. They're like, I, I tweeted. Was the I guy. tweeted the other day. I, I blew out a pair of shoes in a game against the Timberwolves a couple of days ago. Um, even even just not even that tweet, but like I'll tweet something, and at least two to ten responses will always be like, "Come back to LA." Like, can't wait to see you in a Lakers uniform next year. Like they, they're either just like drinking the Kool Aid, or they they just really are trying to convince me to come back. Every time I post something, they they respond. That's got to feel yeah. good though to be loved. Yeah, no, that's cool. I mean, because like like you said, there's a time where, you know, people didn't know who I was at all, and then you know we're to the point now where he's talked about being an asset. Um, probably just over the last couple of years. You yeah. Know, once I signed the contract in Chicago, that was kind of like all right, cool. Like this one team really believes in me, and that was that was a that was a big step for me just to be able to like. Like you said, keep taking another step, keep chasing something. Uh, and then the last couple of years, you know, every year at the trade deadline, there's rumors of, you know, yeah. one to two to ten teams that are interested in me. So I know I that there's some you. type of, yeah, and yeah. I know there's some type of, um, like you said, want for me to, to, to be on their team. And I think that, I mean, that's that's the goal. You know, that's that's leverage, that's power in the league is, is you know, being able to say that multiple teams want you on their team. Yeah, yeah it's a double-sided coin because you – yeah, you're wanted, but then also every time there's a trade deadline, you're like, "Am I going to have to move again?" You know? Yeah. Well, well, that you know, knock on wood, I've never been involved in a trade, mm -hmm. really been a part of one. We didn't have one. Um, I don't think in LA, maybe besides picking up, you know, some free agents, and haven't had one really in Chicago. So, I don't know about the whole the whole moving thing, but there is, you know, this year we were at home. I think last or no, no, this year we were in Memphis. So I was on the road the last two trade deadlines and it's like i'm getting ready like we have a we have a game both days mm -hmm. i'm like getting ready to lay down for my nap at like 12 30 or one and it's like deadlines at three and i'm just all right text my agent I'm like hey i'm just gonna leave my phone on loud like if you need me just call me yeah but i'm gonna go take a nap like i, yeah. I gotta take a nap so i can get ready for the game tonight but it is nice to be wanted how does that work for for most players when they get traded i know you haven't been traded but from mm -hmm. what you know do you do you get a call from your agent first or do you get do you have woge notifications on I don't have notifications, but I do follow Woj. Mm -hmm. um, Are you Shams or Woj guy? I think I'm, I think I'm Woj, but like I, I don't think I have a side. I think it's just that Woj was the first one I knew about, right? So I think that's where the loyalty kind of lies. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's a it's a time game. Like Sh Shams, eventually, you know, yeah, just the years is is going to have to take over. Yeah, I just wonder if most players find out the right way, or if they find. Yeah, out the I I don't think most do. I would I would I would be willing to bet that most find out you know, through their agent or through, you know, you've heard social media, like nightmares where like they see someone tweet that they've gotten traded or they, something crazy like that. I, I don't think most of the time, yeah, I, I just, you don't hear about it. So maybe, maybe that's the thing. It's like when it happens right, people just don't talk about it. Yeah. But like you always hear about the ones where it's like the agent calls you like, Hey, they just traded you or like dude finds out on Twitter or one of their family members texts them and, that's probably not a good feeling. And I also, I at least from my perspective, I always like, obviously being on an NBA team is so different than everyone else's work, like day to day, yeah. where you can't just walk up to AK and be like, hey, you thinking about trading me? <laughs> yeah, I would yeah, assume, no. right? I don't think that dynamic, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Like he's not someone you could just be like, hey, can I just get a few minutes with you? Just wondering, wondering what your plan is with Hey, you. when you have a few, can I uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. have a chat? Can I put you on my calendar real yeah, quick? No, I don't think, yeah, that's probably not the way. <laughs> At least not that I've seen to, to go about it. Yeah, that's. I mean, that comes with the territory. You know, we make a lot of money to play 
children's game. You know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Yeah. Do you remember the moment when you knew that LeBron trusted you? Ooh, good question. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now you say thank you to me. I know I was repeating after you because yeah. that was a good question. It was, it was a great question. Uh, I, I would say, honestly, it's probably earlier than than – maybe even he realized or or people realized it was when I was on two way my last year in LA his first year and they were it was before the AD the year before the AD trade so like I was playing with him and a couple of other two ways and guys you know middle end of the bench because I don't think we were making the playoffs and it was before playing and we're playing at Toronto and I'm running a pick and roll with him on the side and they like uh, this is when I figured out that oh when I'm playing with him people are just gonna pay attention to him and I can just go shoot layups yeah and I just go straight downhill and shoot the layup and one um nice and one yeah and one <laughs> and he comes over to me and he's like talking very intently and directly and it was the first time like within a game where I like it was just like oh we're on the same team playing basketball it's not like oh that's LeBron I'm Alex and we're just happened to be here it was like He's talking to me like teammate, like, "Hey, we gotta figure this out to try and win this game." Like peers, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, like peers. And yeah. so that was that was probably the first time looking back on it where I was just like, oh, "Okay, like this guy's competitive. Like that's what I do. This is gonna be this is gonna be a good thing." That's gotta be a good feeling. Did that did that like unlock something in you where you're like, "Oh shit, LeBron believes me. Maybe maybe I believe in me too." Yeah, I think it freed me up just to know that like the stuff that I see on the court, he's also seeing. Mm -hmm. If obviously, and then then another level to that but like it it my instincts kicked in like I was able to just kind of play free and play off my instincts and then from there learn what to do what not to do you know what I can get away with how I can be useful when playing with him and from there I just I'm I'm a learner so like if the more opportunity the more reps I get like I use that store it up here and then just take it to the next game yeah did has Austin Reeves ever hit you up being like how do I get LeBron to like me <laughs> no no he hasn't <laughs> We do. Uh, we we talked once. We need to try. He wants to try and play golf, and I would, I would love to play golf with him. I heard he's pretty good. Yeah. No, we, he has not hit me up for LeBron relationship advice. Yeah, I mean it. It is it is crazy to think about that team too. I mean, I would assume Anthony Davis is one of those guys who I feel like gets forgotten at times of like how dominant he is when you would even practice with him. Where you're like, fuck, this is like Dude, the, just when he controls the defense. Like, yeah, I mean, the year we won the championship, we literally just like, if he switched on to somebody, you just face guarded your guy and get ready to box out because like we're not helping him. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't need to help him. Like if you try to take it to the rim, he's gonna block it. Yeah. Or he's you're gonna throw it so far up, like you know you're gonna clank it off trying to trying to get around him. And then I mean he's six ten, six eleven, seven something wingspan. Like he's guarding guys with lengths, moving his feet on the perimeter. Like literally when he, when people switched onto him late in the clock, we were just all right. Find your guy. Like we're gonna get the ball back here. Yeah. Um. And then for me, you know, I was just pressure the hell out of everybody, send them into the rim. When you got Dwight Javale, and then you got Anthony Davis. You know, two of the three of them are always on the court together. Like. Yeah, yeah, just pretty, let feed him that way. Pretty easy for me. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, no, he was he was a monster. He he should have won DPOY that year. I think they gave it to Giannis, um, and he gave him MVP too. But like, literally, that was that was that was our defense. Like, yeah, we'd just be super aggressive, and then when AD got on somebody, it's like just let him guard him. Yeah, when he when he's on, it's just the whole the whole defense just looks like unstoppable. Yeah, I mean well, that. Literally, what I told you, like when he's yeah. on, you don't have to play defense anymore. Yeah, he's just gonna do it. Do, who who have you pissed off the most by like being in their face defensively? Because you are a bulldog. Yeah, no, I have to be. Yeah, um, I mean, you're all up in everyone's face. I think that's the fun thing for me too. Is like people always get pissed off and like they think that I'm fouling and like everyone, you know, everyone's best two players in the league thinks that everyone fouls. Right. Yeah. That's just how it goes. But it's just funny to me because I just have like no emotion attached to it, and they're just, you know, if they get mad, it's, it's almost amusing for me because I'm like, yeah, contact sport. What do you want me to do? Yeah, we're playing a sport, and here. I'll let you score. Yeah. Um, I don't know if any one person comes to mind. Is it like though? It, it, is it in the calendar year? Can you tell? Like I've always thought, like you know, February is that time when it you have a lull and guys are you know, maybe looking for the All Star break. Yeah, Will yeah. there be games in February where somebody like, dude, can you stop? Can you stop doing this? 
<laughs> not not directly, dude. I don't know. I mean, I can tell though. You know, like like when I'm picking them up, and they don't usually complain to me. They'll complain to the refs. Yeah. You know, like I'll I'll be super physical, getting over a screen, and then like I'm just trying super hard, like getting deflection, and like obviously, yeah, I'm trying to be all defense again, and I'm trying to make sure that I'm like creating more value for myself in the league. I'm not going to just keep letting you score. Keep right. You do things. Um. And then they start like you know they get mad they get pissed off and start yelling at the ref or like that that's when that's when you know you got them. That's gonna feel like the best feeling. Yeah, yeah, no, that's the best. Yeah. Because then you can kind of like you can kind of troll them in the moment too, you know, like you, you do the indirect like really aggressive clap or like yeah. you know yell at the crowd right with them next to you. That's when you can kind of like get under their skin. Slap the bit. floor a little have bit. You, yeah, have you ever well, slapped the floor? No, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, you can't <laughs> not stop in, the floor. Not without being like, not without being a troll in, in, <laughs> yeah. in practice or something. I don't think in a game. I hate that. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a, a dude thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah you have to the, the five in unison. Yeah, you can't uh -huh. do that. You can't do that. Speaking, uh, speaking of college, though, uh, you had a, a great career at Texas A&M. You were, went to the Sweet Sixteen your senior year. Mm -hmm. Uh, are you still like? Do you still watch college ball? Like, in a fan? I watch A and M. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I can't watch. I can't watch too much college basketball. Why? It's just it's it's slow. Yeah. You know, it's a little too methodical, and it's just I mean, once you played like night in night out, I'm playing against the best players in the world. Like the talent level there is just so different. Like the skill level in college varies. Yeah, you know, the, the, it's nice. The, you know, the good teams you know have a couple players that are really elite that are going to be pros, but even at the same time, it's it's hard to watch. But yeah, I'm still. I'm still, you know, maroon Kool Aid, yeah, and him through and through. They're, we're they're big Buzz guys. Yeah, we love yeah, Buzz. Buzz, guys. Buzz is a good guy. Buzz is our guy. So, are there times when you're watching a college game and you're just frustrated, being like, all these wide open shots are not going in? Because not that even, is when not you even watch the shots, yeah. like because you know, like NBA guys, like you'll miss some open shots every now and then, like that's well, rarely. Yeah, I mean, it, it is it is more rare, but it's it's more just like the basic understanding of basketball yeah you know like understanding how to play um being able to make certain passes that should just be like elementary that they like mess up missing layups and stuff like that's the stuff that like open layups like wide open ones yeah that's the stuff where just like <sighs> how how awesome was it though to play in the tournament get to the sweet 16 because i mean i love it sweet well yeah. you remember you remember our game against Northern Iowa, the yeah. comeback, right? Yes. So that I mean, I get reminded of that by people just as much as you know, winning the championship in LA. Like random people will stop me, and be like, "Oh, dude, I loved you." Blah, 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 blah. And then like you had that game in college, we had the comeback, and I'm like, "Yep, we did." Like it was, you know, crazy. And then we went to the Sweet 16 and got smacked by Oklahoma, but that, that comeback was awesome. Yeah, yeah, but it was also that was the Buddy Healed year, right? So that yeah, was they, good they that you good got team. smacked. So you yeah, no, smacked I mean, even more because Villanova beat Oklahoma by like a thousand. Yeah, that was that was a weird year in college basketball too, because there was like, it was just so up and down. Like we got up to number five in the country at one point that year, and then we lost like four in a row. Yeah, and it was we beat every Big Twelve team we played, like four or five Big Twelve teams, but went like a couple games over five hundred against everybody else. And in, in, uh, that might have been the year before. So you, Texas A and M, you're from right around there. From, yeah. Are you you're no, from College Station? Station. Yeah, 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 I grew up there. So you've never had a chance to be outside the cult. Um, no, I mean I've seen other stuff. Yeah, but like, do you understand how weird it is? Yeah, no, I do. I do. Okay. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I think I think once I left College Station, and I was like, because obviously I'm still like that's the only team I really root for. Like, right. I don't really have a professional sports team that I love outside of. Uh, Premier League soccer. Oh, so who's like your team? Manchester City. Oh, mm -hmm. your front runner. Front runner. Yeah, big been, front. Runner. Been fan for twelve years. Oh, so what when they you know won twelve years ago and your, then won again. Your championship again. merchant. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. We can go yeah. with that. <laughs> and once I left and went to LA, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Like <laughs> everyone is really aggressively pro A and M or pro or anti A and M. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's fine. Like we can go with that. Like I, I, I will. I will admit to being able to recognize that it doesn't lower my level of fandom and love right. or appreciation. But, but since you're from College Station, you never thought that it was weird the whole yell eater thing. That was always normal to you. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I still don't think it's weird. But oh, it, it's the, definitely, oh, the midnight yell. Oh, this is a cult. The midnight yell is not weird. 
What about when they like <laughs> grab each other by the, the by the cock and they like? No, thing. it's not the cock. It's <laughs> it's the waist or the, the it's the shoulder. I went to the store and old uh, Red said, "No, the I mean the the midnight yell is just a pep rally." That's uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess in the same way that Jonestown was a pepper. No, yeah. no, there's, <laughs> there's no drinks being passed around. It's okay. uh, yeah, it's, it's strange. Are you are you allowed in College Station? Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, so, there you go. Yeah. Come on, here we go. I mean, yeah, you, was, you are. The, I really. I, okay, so on the drive over here, I was thinking that somebody was going to show up with the T-shirt of my picture on it. <laughs> yeah. I, in the back of my mind, I was like, they they won't do that. Like, but surely. no, I, I It was cool. It made you cool. It's literally like the best. It crime was ninety percent positive PR. Yeah. Yeah. It you're was the, the best crime to get busted for. You're the last person in America, I think, to get arrested for weed. Yeah. At least in Texas. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we, it was just a grinder, right? I, I am a trendsetter, you know. I pioneer. Yeah, I'm what? saving so many eighteen to twenty one, yeah, twenty two year olds from getting arrested. It's That's crazy. facts. Was it? It was just a grinder, right? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's like because I remember when it happened. I was like, wait, what? What? That's what? It, yeah, that's dude. Nuts. When it was happening too, I was just like more annoyed than anything because I'm like, this is. Well, one, I had to make sure because it was right before I was free agent. I was like, I hope this doesn't mess up, you know, anything with. Me signing a contract didn't. No, nobody, of course not. Nobody in the league cared. Right. Which we know why. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then while it was happening, it was just since since the airport is on, technically it's on Texas A&M campus. It was campus police that came and out. They didn't give you. You did you? Nah, dude, it was too young. You know it I was am? too young. You didn't like, say like up and comers. They were trying. Oh, to, yeah, dude. Remember was, Northern Iowa. Fresh yeah. stashes. You know, they they was one of those. They just of, wanted a, their big. Bus. You remember Northern <laughs> Iowa? Yeah. 12, 12 points in 44 seconds. That yeah. mean anything to you? Yeah. <laughs> that would have rocked. They might have let you go, yeah. That actually would have been like... And they the would have only... been like, we're football fans. Yeah. <laughs> the only time a Dito who I am would work is uh, being like 12 think points so. in 44 seconds. You'd think. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it was It was kind of funny because at the time, me and Big Cat's reaction was the same, which was like, why? Why are they getting yeah. in trouble? Yeah, we were and free then, Alex Cruz. And then there was a... Uh, it just always makes me think back to the Laramie Tunsil draft in the NFL. Oh, yeah. We're like four teams, five teams passed on the That guy. was the night of the draft, huh? Night, it was like... Minutes before the draft yeah, started, yeah, and teams panicked and they're like, "This guy smokes weed. He can't play in the NFL." What year was that? That was like 20... 2016, I 16, think. Sixteen, yeah, yeah. That might have been like the second month of part of my take. Yeah, the, the gas mask. That was crazy. Um, so Alex, I actually I own a piece of Alex Caruso <laughs> history. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this. Uh, I don't know if I am. Um, he has the grinder. You remember? <laughs> no, <laughs> that would be epic. I would buy the. <laughs> Ravel buy the probably grinder. does. That would be Ravel awesome. probably bought. You think so? Yeah. I own a. I own an NBA Top Shot. Oh, you remember hell that? Yeah. yeah, I remember that. The only one that I bought was your chase down block against James Harden. Yeah, I've the seen. Bubble. There's quite a few of those, aren't there? Uh, I don't know how many there are. Uh, no, they're very rare. Just okay. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, rare. super rare. You know, it'd be even rarer if you were to autograph my NBA Top Shot for me, and then I could try to sell that. Can you do that? I'll print out. Like a still frame. And okay. Have you sign it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah but yeah. do you remember that block? I do. I do. I turned it over right before that. Oh, so you were making up for your mistake? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Classic okay. Alex Caruso move. <laughs> it, was, it was a great block. No, it was. It was. It was. Yeah. So I'm watching it right now, and there's, it's, it's in the bubble, and you can see the the videos of the fans in the stands behind you. Okay. How weird was that? Yeah, that was. It was. It was weird until the game started. Like once the game started, you didn't really notice it. It was almost just like. You know how there's like the ribbon board in the NBA, NBA arenas where yeah. it's just kind of like there, but pregame and like warmups, you're like looking and there's like people's faces in these fish bowls just like staring at you. It wasn't normal. It wasn't normal, but like once the game started, I think it was pretty normal. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also pretty sh- sure Little Wayne was in one of them for somebody too. Yeah, I I think I was in one for the Heat. I think I chugged a beer. Hell yeah, might have been in the Eastern Conference in my phone. Hell yeah, and they're like, don't let this guy back on. <laughs> don't don't let him in the Zoom again. Uh, I was I was reading the other day that you're a big fan of Sandstorm by Darude. No, so I don't know why they picked that song because I am first of all great song, yeah. you know, classic. But that wasn't the song the DJ was playing in warmups before that game. Cause that's the whole the whole tweet was before the Minnesota yeah, game, yeah. and I, I had a really good shooting. I had new career high, seven made threes, and I was like, in the interview afterwards with Casey Johnson, one of our reporters, I was just like, yeah, I was like, vibes were great pregame. Like I was, I was coming out, I was bobbing my head. Like music was fena- phenomenal. I was making everything in warm up, so I was like, all right, probably gonna be a good night. Sure enough, and then the guy tweeted and was like, make sure it's Sandstorm. And I was just like, okay, sure. <laughs> gave all the credit to Sandstorm. Yeah, yeah, and then Sandstorm didn't. Didn't deserve it, but 
you know, shout out to the OG. How, Storms. how many points do you think you could score in a game? Because you did the seven threes. I don't know if you uh, saw on uh, January 22nd when uh, Embiid went for 70 and Cat had 53. Yeah. Uh, I did. I did. I did note. I was like, Embiid just went for seventy. Cat has uh, fifty three, and Caruso has nine in the first quarter. So. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw. That. Yeah, it's like everyone's sure going off that. right now. <laughs> it's one of it those. It could days, be one of those league. nights. <laughs> um, I think, I think forty in you. I think forty is 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 a is a number. It would have to be like, it would have to be the right circumstance. Like I'm only getting that many attempts up if there's like a couple people out, or it's like end of the year some some type of situation i think that's my my career high now is like 32 and it was when i was on two-way and it was like one of those things where it's like all right playing the game like for my for my career here right and i think i made five threes in that game and then had a bunch of layups and but like it was me and a bunch of two-way guys and then like kcp and rondo so who yeah. else is going to take the shots yeah you know I, I I can't wait for the forty Alex Russo forty night. I'll, I'll make sure when, whenever awesome. I get the forty ball, I'll give you the shout out for it. Oh yeah, that would rock. Just be like, yeah. thanks, shout out, pardon my take. For, inspiration for behind inspiration all of it. Getting the forty, yeah. you could do it. Yeah, just have you ever gotten the green light for an entire game? I mean, I kind of do, but like I'm trying to win too, so like I don't need to be out there just jacking up oh, twenty five shots. Yeah. No, give, give give Caruso the green light. I don't see. That's the thing. I don't think I have a like a, a red light. Like I don't have like if when the, when I'm open, I'm allowed to shoot. Like I'm allowed to be aggressive. It's, it's like not a like yield I'm, sign. Yeah. Does Billy D ever say like I want you to shoot more? It's like a lime green. Yeah. <laughs> Does he ever say like Hey, you're hot. Shoot more. Uh, no. But like, usually when I'm hot, like I'm gonna shoot it anyway. Like the other night, like I was, you know, I made seven of eight. So like any chance I got, yeah, that's what I did. But like you know, we got Kobe, we got Demar, Vooch, like. I'm not going to just run the offense through me if I'm going one yeah. night. Mm. What's, you, Bill, what's Billy D like as a head coach? B Billy D's got, uh, you know, y'all say y'all like buzz. He's He's got a little bit of buzz charisma into him, you know, with the leadership and, like, making sure that, you know, the team's kind of focused on and, – and big storyteller guy, big, big, big metaphor analogy guy. So that that's always fun because he'll come out of left field with some of these things, but then, it, you know, somehow it always correlates back to basketball. Um, I like playing for Billy. He's competitive. Uh, you know, he's got some of that, you know, we played in Providence back in the day. I don't know if they were Big East or, or what they were, but he's got some of that. Yeah. Some I think he played for Patino. Yeah, right? he's, he's yeah. one of Patino's favorite players. He said yeah. he stunk. That I makes think, sense. I think Patino said he was fat when he came into college, and then he played his way <laughs> and became great at the end of it. I don't know. The only picture I've seen, he looks pretty skinny. Yeah. Yeah. So what, same height. What's a good Billy D metaphor? Billy D metaphor. Dude, he just he he'll come up with stories and like he knows at this point that like, you know, w whenever he tells a story, we like, you know, eye roll, but it's just like, oh, okay, here we go, another story. So like, he'll start it off and be like, Vooch, I know you love stories. Here's another story. <laughs> and it'll like go into it before, and it'll just you know whatever we need during the season, whether it's like you know refocus on. You know, we talked about that that using the old pictures from high school, like yeah. finding the love for the game and stop like get out of your own head and thinking about circumstances presently you know yeah, when you had hair yeah being 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 more involved in, in your love for the game rather than focusing yourself kind of thing i have a hair question but i want to go a question off of billy d uh when you got to the bulls he obviously was hired as well um were there any stories about jim boylan and and what happened before you got there i so i don't know him personally <laughs> yeah we'll just you know disclaimer yeah because that's got to be i mean but Billy yeah, Donovan's a that guy was a coach. unique character. I heard. <laughs> I heard he was a. I heard he was a unique character. Yeah. Um, he basically was like a Pop Warner coach playing coaching NBA basketball. I love that. Yeah, but he's. I mean, credit to him. He keeps finding jobs. Yeah, I know. He's a basketball <laughs> lifer. He coach. He coached USA basketball. Yeah. FIBA World Cup qualifiers. Uh -huh. uh, he was head coach there. I think he's in Indian. I think he's in Indiana right now with the Pacers. Yeah. So like. I don't know, maybe he's just a wizard in these meetings with the with yeah. the office guys or he's just like he or he's got blackmail on everybody. Yeah, I don't know. He's <laughs> he's uh he it was a ride. It was a ride when he was here in Chicago. It was something yeah. something special. Yeah, I some heard sound it was, bites. I heard it was unique. <laughs> Very unique. <laughs> I heard it was unique. But uh all right, so the hair question, when did you know that you're going bald cuz I feel like you did a really good job like we never really got full bald. Like you 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 got yeah, you made yeah. the switch fast enough that no one really caught on. Well, it was uh, it was right after it was right after the championship. It was right after we won the chip, and then I I did a deal with Manscaped. I signed like a hundred k deal with them to like promote their stuff, 
And this was like when they were first coming on and like I ended up shooting a commercial with them and it was on TNT or something. And it was like this cheesy little like me flying through the air. Kind of like their whole, you know, their whole yeah, mantra yeah. is like kind of like goofy and, and sarcastic. Um, and they were like, yeah, we'll give you a bunch of money and do this commercial and like shave your head. I was like, all right, sure. It's like, I'm gonna have to do this anyway. Like, yeah. I might as well, you know, get some, get some fun money. Actually, you did, you did have some bad hair. I was going to say, I remember yeah. there was, I forgot, there was a the second headband. where it was dodgy. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, I was, I was so locked in on basketball that like, I just didn't care. And yeah. like, I think it was bad. Like I would see some of the photos after like games and I'd be like, ah. That, yeah. The headband was great. smart. Cause you also rock the headband that's like. Did, did he have a traumatic brain injury or is he wearing a headband? It was a thick, yeah. yeah thick it was ass thick. One. <laughs> well, dude, I have a, I have a small head in general. So like, like hats, beanies, like I don't, I can't wear like flat bill hats. Like I'm, I'm a big snapback yeah. baseball cap. Like I have to like find certain ones that I can fit. So like the headbands are. They're crucial. Yeah, it was, it was important. Would yeah. you, would you always like make sure to adjust it after a play? If you got hit like real quick, pull it down to the right spot. Yeah, I could feel it. But like, even then sometimes I've seen highlights of me where it's like, you know, like kind of zigzagged and it's like, sometimes I just lose, I lose control of it. Yeah. That's it's smart by manscape though. It was like, if, if we're going to ask somebody to shave their head, let's ask somebody who's probably going to shave their head soon. Yeah. It was very responsible. Yeah. Have you thought about going mustache only? Um, I do every now and then in the summer, like I did for Fourth of July last year, just for fun. Yeah, yeah, I, I can show you. The yeah, yeah, I want to see that. Also, you would drop forty with mustache. Easy. That's a forty stash. Easy. Yeah, I think, I think, I think that's probably the. I think that's probably the, the yeah. key to it. Like maybe unlock. that's a signal for us. Is is the night that you're going to go off? Just roll out there with a mustache as a signal. Like, really like, that, now you're it's trying on. to get it's me. Green in light. The, you're trying to get me in the John Tate Porter <laughs> mess. We're not like, oh, just man. stay away from that. <laughs> did you? Did you I'll find it and show you too. You remember the like. time you got drug tested because you did a Photoshop picture with muscles? Yeah. No, I didn't do a Photoshop. <laughs> picture. Oh, you just posted a Photoshop. Picture. Somebody, somebody posted, posted it to me. Yeah. yeah. I was just getting back into LA and we we're and I was working out, and this was like this was uh, this might have been before. After my two way year going into the year that we won the chip, the twenty twenty season, nineteen twenty season, I was just working out. Like that's what the young guys do. Like you come back a couple of weeks before in September and start working out, get in front of like everybody again. And, you know, our the PR people just taking pictures coming back. And this was like still after like, you know, the hype was still building. And somebody just photo excuse me, they photoshopped and made me look like Miles Garrett. And then all of a sudden, like within a week, I got a drug test, and I was just like, "Well, <laughs> welcome to the welcome to the the big leagues." Oh, that's so good. Caruso is being brought to you by our great friends over at Top Golf. It's golf. It's not golf. It's Top Golf. If you've never heard of them, they have all the stuff to make them legit golf. They've got balls, clubs, turf, even a ball picker upper cart thing. But they're very much not golf too. We're talking loud music, giant targets, climate controlled bays, and unbeatable food and drinks day or night. There are a lot of big sports moments coming up soon, so if you want to catch the games as you play, Top Golf is the place. Since they want everyone to play, they just launched Half Off Golf Monday through Wednesday when you book in their app. All you have to do is book a Monday through Wednesday in their app, and you'll get half off the golf. Of course, even they have some rules. Half Off Golf Monday through Wednesday applies to gameplay only, isn't offered at the Vegas venue, and it's only available when you book in the app. For full details on this offer, visit topgolf.com pmt. For a limited time, get half off golf every Monday through Wednesday when you download and book in the app. For full details, visit topgolf.com forward slash PMT. That's topgolf.com forward slash PMT. Crusoe is also being brought to you by Proper 12. Pick up a bottle, try it for yourself. Original, rich and smooth Proper 12 Irish whiskey, or try crisp and fresh Irish apple, smooth to the core. And now, here's more Alex Caruso. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we, we had this debate uh, last week on the show. Um, we were talking about college versus the NBA. Mm -hmm. The shot making at the NBA is so much better. Players are so much better at that level. Um, how many players do you think right now could go from the NBA if you were to take one guy, put them on the worst roster in college basketball that's in the tournament? So like one of the 16 seeds. Yeah. How many, how many players are there in the NBA where they could take that roster and then win a championship with it? Win, win the tournament. Win the yeah, just put them on a yeah. team. Like put them on the one of the worst teams. Oh, dude. Like I was saying that it would be more than we think. Yeah, more than you think for sure. Yeah, 
Like if you put, what, what what what's the number y'all are y'all y'all said? I, I you said a few. I, I, I said like fifteen. I thought maybe. about it. I think my number's probably around ten. Oh, yeah. I was gonna go. I was gonna go like way triple, more, triple that maybe. Yeah, maybe 30? forty. Yeah, because like, I mean anybody that's like, uh, dude. I mean, guys in the NBA are so good, man. Yeah, yeah. Like you got to automatically think bigs have an advantage because it's college, so like the big is back, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so like that brings in a whole nother couple group of people i th- i think probably 30 to 40 uh, i'd say 30 30 safe because you never know the last 10 they might not have yeah the, yeah the yeah, dog in them i was thinking like Dwayne wade when he was on marquette they were a decent team but then they also had Dwayne wade but they didn't even win the championship i'm comparing this right now to I like every every player that i'm putting on the worst team i'm making them play uconn in my head right now yeah yeah and like Giannis playing on, on like a 16 seed I I think they would probably win. He wouldn't even have to dribble. He just he just go. To, he's so strong. Like right. You would. It doesn't matter. He would men foul out the. Boys. He would foul out the whole team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's dunking on grown men. Yeah, it wouldn't be fair. Yeah. Um, the 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 best way I think win. We'll go with this. Well, twenty seven. Twenty seven. Okay. That sounds um, good. Good answer. Make a whole list. It makes it sound like you really thought about I it. I did. Yeah. Yep. Made a list. Yeah. The the best way to like describe the difference. I think Windhorse said it a few years ago where he was like the worst shooter on an NBA team would be the best shooter on a college team. Yeah. And like that's even including big men. Yeah. Like they oh, would yeah. be better than like the three point sniper on a college team. I mean team. yeah, I mean that's I, I've seen JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard go shot for shot from the three point line at five spots. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like first one to miss and they both make like four or five in a row. Yeah. And, and y'all it, would never trust them to shoot like outside in the game. You would be like, no, 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 don't do that. Like Set the screen, roll. We'll throw you the lob. But I've seen, yeah, like I've seen, I've seen a number of big men that just they can shoot in practice, but yeah, they're not asked just, to do it in a game. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's different. Yeah, how, how awesome of a teammate was Javale? Javale's a great teammate, man. He's he's one of the guys I love seeing now because he's just so he's so he's so chill. Like it doesn't like make make any sense that you know when he first came in the league, he was on Shaq and a fool. Yeah, you know, every other week. Yeah, and now he's playing like 17 years in the NBA. Yeah, no, like that's one incredible of the career. That he he should he should get a lot of respect and and admiration for that because like he figured it out. Yeah, like he yeah. figured it out how to be a pro. Fun fact: Javale was the one that convinced me to wear uh, the headband. Oh, really? Yep. So he was the he friend was the head who man. was he like started your doing bald. the. Yep. Yeah, he was. He was <laughs> He was an inspiration. He was the nice friend. Teammate. Yeah, who was like, hey, man. <laughs> yeah, he was like, hey, bro. <laughs> the thing I used to love about JaVale was he would go out there. He would he was a great player by the time he was done with his career. and um, But he would still have, like, once a week, he'd have an, a throwback JaVale moment where he'd do something like put up a shot. Yeah, I think he was just head. testing it out, like, see if he still got it. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. He's like, see if I can still, get, see if I can still do this. Uh, yeah. Speaking of the NBA to college, can you tell the story about how you uh, ruined the basketball hopes of a TikToker? Because I I read that story. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. He yeah. was. It was high school. Yeah. Um, we talked about this the other day in the locker room randomly, because um, we were talking about like, you know, every now and then guys will like, no matter who it is at any level, they'll be like, oh yeah, I played against that guy in high school, or I played against that guy in college, and like we don't remember because we played against thousands of people. Right. Um, my I had a couple people send me that TikTok where this guy was like basically talking about like yeah i thought i was good like i thought our team was good coach comes in and he tells him like hey there's one guy on the other team you gotta worry about like make sure that we're locked in and focus on him and like we had some decent athletes you know in texas 5a 5a school so like big school 3,000 students um a couple football players uh like you know first off the bus kind of guys mm-hmm. and then like i come in and the coach points at me he's like that's the guy you worry about and this is when we talked about like i had the floppy hair like i had bangs yeah and he tells a story. He's like, "Yeah, I'm just like stealing the ball, dunking, like doing a windmill and warm up." So I was like, "Yeah, that was me in high school. Like I was, I was different in high school. I was dunking on people and basically just playing like you know how college players do at the rec and yeah in the off season." Yeah, I love it though. This kid, this kid told the whole story. He's like, "Yeah, I thought I was nice, and then yeah. Alex Crusoe showed up, and I was like, oh fuck, I stink. There are levels to this thing." Yeah, that was. I remember the tournament too. I remember we we played a. It was a preseason tournament. Down in Houston, our coach took us down there because he used to he used to coach down in Houston a little bit, and we just went out there and we just like destroyed people. <laughs> we were just we were a good team though. My senior year, like we we lost like like five or six games. Does this still shock you every now and then? Like because it is. We were talking about this. I was talking about it with Titus. Like for some reason, the NBA is 
the one sport where like casual fans are like, oh, I could take him. Like we, like Scalabrini used to do the Scal Challenge where he would yeah, he would just destroy invite people one on one. He would invite anyone. I've seen the video. Want, he yeah. puts somebody to like eleven and he smokes them eleven zero. Yeah, and it's like you don't understand how good we are to be in the NBA. Do yeah. you ever have like people who talk shit and you're like, you just don't have any idea? Like yeah, all the time, this, yeah. every day. You should do a Caruso Challenge. Yeah, maybe we can host it here. Maybe we should Just dominate people. If I played you first to five hundred, that's like people. That's like people, like random, like like average. You know, your average Joe on Twitter, and he's just like, whenever I'm like playing bad or something, it's just like this guy sucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, he's like, I was scoring him any day. I'm like, dude, I was first team all defense last yeah. year. Like, that is incredibly hard to do. Like, yeah. you understand the people that I have to guard every night and night, and you think that you can. Just walk in here and do this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we need to do a Crusoe yeah, challenge. If, if that played, would be that would be a good one. Half court, me versus you, first to five hundred. Would I score? Eventually, yeah. I think I would just like once I get up to yeah. five hundred, yeah. I'd yeah, just be like, just ah, I just catch my breath for five points and yeah. Then yeah. go score the other hundred in a row. Then I would clip yeah. that video and that would be yeah, that would be the the that <laughs> online every day. <laughs> how, how often? First to five, me five zero. Oh. <laughs> how often do you get people being like, "Damn, you're a lot taller than I thought." Yeah, pretty often. Cause that's it's always so funny. Cause like even Steph, like you know, he looks. People are like, oh, he's so small. It's like he's six three, six four. Like that's a big human that, being. And that's what I try to explain to people. It's like you you don't understand the monsters that play in the NBA. Yeah. Like they, these dudes are genetic lottery winners. Yeah. And also athletic and coordinated. Like you know, you can pick anybody in the world that you know, find a couple guys that are six ten can't chew gum and ride a bike at the same time yeah like these dudes in here like they're monsters like yeah. they fill up a room yeah and they're smart too they're they're they're, they're so smart, smart when it comes they're to coordinated and everything they're strong like i'm a i'm a big human being average like human yeah. being just on that scale once i get to the nba i'm a little guy yeah like i'm i'm small yeah, yeah but even, even a dude like james harden he is he's so smart when it comes to understanding the rules how to use them to his advantage and and take whatever the refs are going to give him. Yeah, there's a bunch of people like that now. Yeah, so how, how do you adjust your defense playing against guys like that? I mean, first you got to learn what's a foul and what's not a foul based on how the league is going to officiate it. Like, that's the key because, like, you can think you're playing really good defense, but, like, what they could do in the 90s and the early 2000s, you'd foul out in 10 minutes trying mm -hmm. to do that nowadays. So, I mean, a lot of it's just figuring it out and then – you know, just not getting upset when the refs call something that you think is bullshit. Yeah. Like, that's the biggest thing is, like, they're going to call some bad fouls that it's a product, right? We want to score points. We want to entertain people. So, like, the offense is always going to have the advantage. Yeah. So, at that point, it's just like, all right, don't 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 get pissed when there's a bad one. Is it, like, night to night in terms of how you adjust how you play defense depending on the refs? Or is it month to month, year to year? Because they do, they do put points of emphasis on yeah. different things at different times. Yeah, sometimes the points of emphasis last for a couple of weeks. Sometimes they last a whole year. That's neither here nor there. Yeah. You know? But, no, the, the, the way that the game is called usually increases towards the end of the year. You know, like, mm -hmm. there's, been, there's been an uptick, like, statistically in, like, the amount of free throws shot – before All Star break and after All Star break, well, I guess so. Down to like a regression, like less fouls are being called. You know, it's starting to get a little more playoff like. Yeah. Where like you know, you don't get the little bump, ah, uh, head fake, throw it at the rim call anymore. Yeah. And that's always an interesting dynamic to see how like the guys who do get those calls during the year have to adjust. And that's what we were talking about earlier, where like guys get pissed and they start yelling at the refs. And it's like, no, I know that I can get away with this now, or yeah. vice versa. My favorite is uh, whenever Jokic tries to act like he was going to shoot a three from like the opposing oh, line. The line. He's going to get it. He should. They should call it. Like he's, you know he's in the act of shooting. You know what's crazy about that is like practically thinking, right? Why would that not be if he's if he's legitimately legitimately shooting the ball? Yeah. Right from there, like it's like the it's like the it's like the people who talk about like if it's a foul in the first minute of the game, it should be a foul in the forty seventh minute. Of the yeah, game. yeah. Kind of, kind of true. Yeah. You know? like if, yeah. swallow your whistle, like if the dude's trying to shoot it, what like what at what distance does it become not an attempted shot? Yeah. Why can I not shoot it from here? Why why is that? Before Steph, if somebody was trying to pull up like five feet from half court, they'd be like, no, that's that wasn't going to go in. Yeah, they'd be like, no, you weren't really trying to shoot it, like. You don't you don't get to judge my intent. Like yeah. you just take the facts for what and they are. Jokic should probably make that. I hope it happens. <laughs> he could. Like, I yeah, hope it happens yeah. in a playoff game. 
Yeah. Like like a concert. Nah, they won't. They won't do they that. Would, they could. That would be that. so. Awesome. But it would be great. So preseason next year, get we'll get one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they should actually do is tell the refs, okay, we got, we have to give him one, so he stops trying it. Yeah, and give it to him. No, see, season. the problem is you give him one. Now they're gonna do it. Oh, now everyone they're gonna draw plays first it. time that happens. Yeah. It'll happen three or four times the next night in the NBA. Yeah. Somebody will try it. Well, I don't want to – I think you can guard anyone, so I don't want to disrespect you in asking who's the hardest to guard, but who Thank you. has the most uh, in their bag? Who has the most moves where you're like, damn, like they just do everything? Um, this year, I mean, it, the two guys that are guards that are in the MVP conversations, Luca and uh, – Shea, Gilgis Alexander. Yeah. Like they, uh, they're, they're well, his sh- career's over because that commercial. Wait, what commercial? Him and Chet singing. Oh, dude, that was so tough. It's yeah. tough. I actually I saw that like, so many times watching dude, the games, they, too. They literally, like, they're a fun young team, and those guys are so good. And yeah, yeah, they yeah. did that, and it's like, I don't like them. R.I.P. their career. That's <laughs> yeah, sad yeah. to see for them. You know? It's over. It was yeah. so promising. Yeah. So, so Luca, for example, like, I mean, it, watching him play is crazy, but yeah. no, when, you're, when you're playing against him, I would assume – it's more of like we know he's going to score. We know he's going to get his shots. Just trying to make him work as hard as possible for it. Yeah, no, that's. I mean, that's. You could you could use that line and sentence for thirty people in the NBA. Really? Yeah. No, I mean, there's like there's nothing you you can't stop. I, I've said this before. It's like dudes, like the dudes in the league, like the ones, they're going to get their averages. Yeah. Too many possessions. The game's too open. Like it's just there's forty eight minutes. They're going to play forty of them. They're gonna get their numbers. You got to make sure the other guys don't get above their averages. You got to make sure this guy doesn't, you know, he's averaging 29, 30, 31. You got to make sure he doesn't get forty. Yeah. Make sure he doesn't get fifty. Mm-hmm. Do you keep it in your head when someone scores on you? Like, all right, that was two. No, no, I don't. Okay. I got. I, I'm. 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 I got amnesia when I play basketball. That's smart. You have to though. Probably, like yeah. that's what we talked about. These these guys are incredible athletes, shot makers, scores like. They're gonna make shots. Like I could play the best defense in the world. Like good offense beats good defense any day of the week. Yeah. Jokic hitting a one foot timeline shot last year in the playoffs over AD. It's like, like what do you like? You couldn't have guarded any better. Dude threw in a prayer. Like that's gonna happen. Like at that point, it's just like, all right, cool, take it out. Let's go the other way. Yeah. yeah. How how annoying was Pat Bev in practice? Pat Bev wasn't annoying in practice. <laughs> he uh, he tells us that he's annoying in practice. He 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 ended Jeremy Lin's career. He's a hard worker. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, no, he just in said Houston? that when he he was trying to get in the league, he was like, I started guarding him the minute he got off the bus. Like, yeah, no, that's fair. Went, I yeah. mean, that but that's you got to do that to stay in the league. Like, yeah, that's, you know, Pat recognized the opportunity. Uh, no, he just he just pisses people off because he's just so extra sometimes. Yeah, which it's I mean, smart. Yeah, got to do what you get to keep your job, bro. Like you know, he was he was. First team all defense for a handful of years. Yeah, and now he understands the game. Now he knows how to think the game, and that's just his stick now. You know, that's, that's his mantra. You had to have been when he was on the Bulls last year, and then now he's back off the Bulls. You're like, fuck! I really liked when he was on my team, and I didn't have to deal with him. Yeah, it was funny seeing it from like the first person view every night, and seeing how he would like just fuck with people. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's the best. Yeah. 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 He's he's very good at getting inside your head and and driving somebody off their game because now they're they're not thinking about the game they're thinking about Pat Bev. Yeah. Like he he did that he tried to do that to me a little bit I can't remember when it was the game we played here. Yeah. Uh, the late the, game. the late game. Yeah. yeah. And he he was messing with a couple of our guys and he was like talking to our bench in front of our bench after like the thing with Bobby and, and Demar and so I was just like. I was just like slowly escorting him, like, all right, come on, come on. And he like slapped my hand down. And like, I knew he was just like, you know, he's doing what he does. And so I just don't even give him a reaction. And he's like talking. And he just passed me the butt, pat him on the butt. All right, come on. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Good, it's like, just got to ignore it. Yeah. We, we both know that we don't want to waste energy doing this. Like, yeah. Just keep going. Yeah. Who on, who on the Bulls right now, young guys, because there are a lot of young guys, is like, you can see like they're going to have a long, awesome career. Honestly, I think I mean obviously the two are two guards right now. I O I O and Kobe. Year, just, yeah. just because they like you can tell that they've they've as an NBA player, the thing I respect the most about other NBA players is when you can tell that they got better because they worked hard. Yeah. You know, like like you can be good in the league, but if like if you leave one season, like the end of this season, I come back next season and my game is exactly the same and I haven't changed anything. I wouldn't respect that as much as like I saw Kobe last year and I saw him come back this year and like 
oh, I could tell he's worked all summer and gotten better. Io, same thing. I could tell all summer he worked, got better, and then like through the year it shows. Like those are the things that like you you can figure out who's going to be in the league for a long time based on who goes and gets better each summer. Yeah, you know, because that that's what happens. Like every year, there's 60 new players picked in the draft. Every year, that's 60 jobs that have to be replaced. And then you got free agents, and you got people retiring. Like the turnover is crazy in the NBA. So like if you're not getting better and you're staying in the same place, you. you walk in a dangerous line of getting replaced yeah so what are you working on this off season i'm probably going to try and work on like a little little touch shot mid-range instead of trying to get all the way to the rim just because you know i'm I'm, like over the last couple weeks i've been dealing with like an ankle sprain and it's finally like feeling better but like for those two weeks i didn't have like the explosion that i usually do and i didn't have like the ability to like jump up like i missed a dunk one night against somebody i barely made one last night like I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's like, uh-huh. oh, once I get old, like I'm not going to be able to use my athleticism. Like I got to be able to get here and be crafty and use use different shots. So probably that, probably playing off pivots in the lane and then and then just working on little touch shots. Yeah. yeah. How embarrassing is that when you miss a dunk? I've never missed one. I've never missed a dunk. Oh for oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, you don't have to say that. Well, I just want to make sure everyone knows. <laughs> Uh, no, I had, no, I ju- I said clearly I've never missed a dunk. Yeah. yeah. You're right. You're right. Um, <laughs> Is that a hundred percent then, or is that a zero percent? Uh, it's a hundred percent because I've dunked on like the the koosh ball. Yeah, I mean I've never uh, okay. failed respect, dunking. Respect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you have. You're right. Um, <laughs> honestly, not too much. Embarrassing isn't the word. Like I'm more disappointed in myself. Like uh, I just wasted two points. Like I could have just yeah. laid it in and got my. Yeah, two layup points. counts as two. Yeah, um, but not embarrassed. Like I don't really hold fans' opinions very high. That's smart. As far as like, That's very you know, smart. Like, not, not in a disrespectful way, but like a, you don't understand what's going on out here. No, it's like you can disrespect that. You, you can be like, yeah, you, We're idiots. you don't get it. You're yeah. dumb. Yeah, no, it's like we talked about earlier, like the people who think they can just like, you know, go score an NBA game. Or, I saw something, it was somebody on TikTok and it was like, it was like, you could give you $10 million right now or, 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 or like I could give you like ten thousand dollars right now or you had to go get like five rebounds in an nba game for like ten yeah. million dollars and people are like i think i could do it <laughs> <laughs> no, you, no, you couldn't bro like it's the jay-z i'm Tom six State. five and yeah. somewhat athletic and like pretty heady like smart iq like i can find the ball i average like three and a half rebounds yeah. a night like four rebounds like you're not getting five yeah good rule of thumb is if somebody says you can either have ten thousand dollars right now say yes yeah just say just yes don't, let, yeah, okay. don't finish the sentence <laughs> say, i'll take the thing grand yes. tunnel of chaos yeah uh we were talking about the the in-season tournament uh, a few months ago yeah. and whether or not the players cared about it i think it was smart having you know the nba give setting aside okay here's cash here's money if you end up winning mm-hmm. but some teams obviously cared about it some teams did not care about it as much did you find yourself caring about the tournament yeah i definitely cared about it um i don't think anybody didn't care but i think some people had like a a a, a for sure plan and guideline of what they wanted to do with the in-season tournament and then some teams were just like kind of figuring out their team still you know it was so early in the season that like a lot of people like if you look back at the games and looked at the box scores like i'm sure probably half the teams in the league don't have two or three of the players that played in those like started in those games mm-hmm. for them playing right now like that's one thing is like it felt like it was a year ago you yeah, know? right it was so long ago so like maybe they maybe they change it and make make it a little longer or push it a little a couple days back in the season um but no i definitely cared did y'all are y'all pro colored courts or I actually kind of liked the diff. Like I liked, I, they were tough to look at, but I did like that they tried to do something new. I, I and thought it, made it was it fun. Felt like it was different. Like, like I, I enjoyed. Like people said, they hated looking at, you know, like I think, I think Phoenix had a purple court that was Charlotte kinda, was tough. What was Charlotte's? Was Charlotte it? was like teal. Oh, no, that that yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just anytime we're such creatures of habit, and when we watch a game on TV, if it's different, we're like, yeah, this sucks. Bad. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, fun, bad, bad, we, fun. If they if they reintroduce the first line or the first down line in football right now, people would be like, oh, that sucks for a week. Yeah, they'd be but like, the reality is you can't stupid. live without it. But yeah, anything news. It's, no, it's, I thought I thought it was I thought it was good. Like the intensity around the games was real. Like I don't yeah. know if y'all could feel it through the TV watching or not, but like it, it felt. You know, people called it like playoff atmosphere, like we're treating it like a playoff game kind of thing. It it felt like that for you know, 
majority of the games. Yeah. yeah. What's uh what's the best jersey the Bulls have right now that make you feel like you're gonna play the best? Because it is the black with the little pinstripe. That's mm. okay. Yeah, the classic. Yeah, yeah black. those ones are great. Sick. I love. I think black. I think black uniforms are the best. Really? Yeah. The uh, I I do think the NBA has gone too uniform crazy. Like there's there's times they've they've kind of, it was what was it a couple of years ago yeah a couple of years ago the city editions first came out it was rough it there was, was a couple of bad ones there was a game where I think the Pacers might have been playing the Heat and it was like the the Heat were it's wearing like color yellow. rush yeah color rush throw up night yeah the, in the NFL. Heat wearing like yellow and the Pacers were wearing like what the Heat should be wearing and I was like what is going on or sometimes yeah. when like the Nuggets. Uh, it was the Nuggets playing the Blazers, and the Nuggets were wearing like a maroon. And you're like, "What's going on here?" Oh yeah, they did. Well, yeah. that's when they they like changed their whole like, yeah. logo and color scheme. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I don't like that. What they man, what they need to do is bring back the old the old jerseys. Yeah. Like the Nuggets with the with the stripes. The, yeah, the stripes. The Raptors, the purple Raptors uniform. Yeah, the old Grizzlies. Old Grizzlies. Grizzlies ones. You know, the Bulls are the only team in the NBA history never so changed the their, their logo. Yeah. It's the robot doing the DJ. That's why the black ones, dude. I'm telling you. It's... Yeah, those are the night. Those are those are awesome ones. Yeah. When you first put on the Bulls jersey, were you like, "I'm Michael Jordan"? <laughs> Close, but no. <laughs> I was more like, "Oh, I'm John Paxson." <laughs> shout, sure. shout out, yeah, yeah, shout out to my guy Pax. Yeah. But it's cool to to be like, I'm I'm wearing the same jersey that the greatest player of all time wore. Yeah, I think I think well. Oh, a, uh, oh no, you kept uh, on you going. Sucked that in. You almost sucked that in. You almost sucked that in. You went by it. Y'all are trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> You're a Kobe guy. I, I think we'll come back to this. The jersey part is like the cool part is like, y'all, I don't think y'all see the details, but any team that's won a championship, they have a crest. Yeah. Like a, a, a I don't even know what it looks like, but like it's like a shield with, with the number of championships you won. And so like every time you put on your jersey, right, you put it on, you know, your back Caruso six and then it has the, the six thing on. X, yeah so like when i was in la it said you know 16 or however many it was and then the next year we won it 17 so like that part is when i put that on for the bulls like that was cool and then like hearing like the uh the little Alan theme Parsons song project. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 that's yeah. gets that, you jacked up yeah so right. yeah what it is the you know you look up and you're like man i'm playing we're the best player bar none time not LeBron? even close. He's played, there. He's played there a couple of times. So you're LeBron? No, it was uh, Jordan. Wait, what do you mean? Way more than this a couple is, times. Oh, right. oh, wait. I don't know who were we talking about. We're talking about the greatest player ever. Yeah, who is that? Might be MJ. Oh, you still got a year on your contract with the Bulls, so yeah, I, yeah, yeah. No, I know. Probably y'all are gonna there's some pitchforks out of here. You're you're setting the stage. Uh, it's one A one B. I don't know. You don't know which one? Yeah, I've got. That's a really smart answer. I feel like. I feel like somebody else asked me this. It is. The I new, wanted to say it was you, but I don't know if it was. It's like the new hot dog is a sandwich. It's it's. Oh, it's not new. This has been going. No, on. I know, but I'm yeah, saying yeah, like yeah. everyone asks this question and becomes like like first take when they just run out of stuff to talk about. Them. Yeah. Well, they. Yeah, Who's the goat? That's yeah. a whole other. That's a whole other conversation. Sports talk TV. Oh. What would you change? Oh. What would I change? Yeah. Just the whole thing. What know? about us? Would you change us? No, no, no. Y'all are fine. Yeah, okay. Y'all cool. are like third third party kind of like omniscient you know yeah, yeah. Over everything yeah i wouldn't i would have like specific sports stuff like have to have former players talk about stuff i don't hate that because there are definitely i mean we people they, that go through it need yeah to be the ones speaking on yeah, well the problem is i think w w w we try to do is we try to admit that we are really stupid before we say anything yeah. great disclaimer right a huge disclaimer that basically his liability our gone. entire soon career as, except as, for mj versus lebron we're, we're very right about that okay yeah yeah, but everyone else historians of yeah. the yeah people who debate. don't admit that they're dumb before they say dumb stuff i could see how you'd be like you have no idea or after yeah. or at all you know or, just yeah. in general and yeah there's, there's nothing at stake if you're wrong mad dog mad dog said he was going to retire if the uh if the diamondbacks made the world series yeah, yeah. They right won. yeah <laughs> yeah they went and he's like come series. on i was joking about that he's yeah like, ah, he just kidding i got three more years on my contract yeah he would have high stepped around the studio if he was right about it yeah uh, yeah, no, that's a fair point. I think having having somebody at least in the conversation that's gone through it would probably be a good addition overall. Yeah. Are you a Are you a Cowboys fan? No, I'm not. I got friends that are. Oh, you talked about this earlier. I don't have a favorite pro sports team. Like I grew up in A and M, so like maroon Kool Aid from birth, and then I never caught on. I would always watch like the Texas teams though. Like growing up with basketball, I had you know like prime Texas basketball. I had T Mac Yao. I had Dirk. Yeah. Uh, you know the 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 Hall of Fame trio in San Antonio. So like I was I was 
a fan of theirs, but like I didn't follow the teams. Did you just try to say some of my friends are Cowboys fans, so you can relate to them? You're are you allowed to do that? No, no, no. I if they lose or win, I don't care. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, it, it makes no difference to me. Hey, Hank's you, a Cowboys fan. You don't care. You don't even take joy when they lose. That's the best part about not being a Cowboys fan. I take yeah. joy in my friends' misery. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's but that's fair. me. Me be being a good friend. Like, yeah, if I right. didn't do that, it and would you'd be, be a bad friend. Yeah. yeah. If you're like, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No. That would be lame. Yeah. All right. Well, I got one last question. It's a rowback question. R H O B A C K dot com. Promo code take twenty percent off your first purchase. Q zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts. Uh, Roback.com promo code take. This has been awesome. We we actually when once we get into playoff basketball, maybe when we have a question where we're the dumb people talking about it, we might have to hit you up and be like, hey, can you help us? Yeah, phone a friend. Yeah, phone mm-hmm. a friend. Um, my last question though is, um, how many times do you think LeBron has read The Godfather? The book read The Godfather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the book. Had in the- yeah, 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 yeah. How many times uh, do you think he's read it? Twice, F- cover to cover. Yeah. Huh. Have you seen him read right. it? Cover to cover, you mean the front cover and the back cover? Have you seen, no, 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 like have you seen him reading No, I haven't. I haven't. Do you remember when he was photographed walking into the locker room and every time his bookmark was on the same page? <laughs> was, that, was that in the bubble when he had the book? I don't know. It was – then someone asked him, like, who his favorite characters were, and he he was like, uh, the Italian guy? <laughs> I don't know if that's <laughs> the exactly Italian how it guy. went, but – Let's see. LeBron asked what his favorite scene from The Godfather is. Let's see what he says. I'm probably going to play a stupid ad before this. They're definitely going to. It's like the one where they kill everybody. Oh, how awesome was it to play with J.R. Smith? Dude, Swish is the best. He's. I play a lot of golf with him. Really? He's yeah, really right? good, right? Yeah, he's good. When he's on, he's he's really good. Yeah. What yeah, he was that? so chill. Dude, that was that was something while we're filling this time. Our our team in the bubble had, you know, whenever you don't play in the games, you do these things called stay ready runs. So, like, the guys that don't play will play pickup in the days, stay in shape in case they got to go in and play. And so, like, it would be, you know, Quinn Cook, Jared Dudley, uh, Taylor Horton Tucker, J.R. Smith, uh, Dion Waiters, JaVale and Dwight would get in there. Like, we had some, like, elite, elite pickup runs in the bubble when they weren't playing in between days. So, like, every now and then, like, I'd go in and get my work in, then I'd just sit there and watch them play. Yeah. It's, dude, the shot-making ability for – Dion and, and Swish. Yeah. And JR, Carlo, when bro. he get when he would get hot, it was just like everything would go in. Yeah. I mean, if he would have played I mean, he did pretty well for himself. It's not like he had a bad career. Like he had a very good career, but like if he would have played in this era, it would have been Yeah. It would have been talked about. Yeah. Right, so here's what LeBron you got? on the Godfather. Let's see what he says. <laughs> uh, not related to the game, but since uh, it has been a lot of publicity uh, yesterday and today about Godfather part two. Is that the Godfather the, talking the about? The scene or, or the moment or the phrase or the quote you like more from the movie? Oh, from the Godfather. Uh, um, it's, it's too many different phrases uh, and too many different lines in that movie to just... Uh, Fair answer. Yeah. Categorize one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but which is the one... Which, this guy doubled down was, on him? Yeah, he was fucking going at him. <laughs> I've never seen I mean, this. Each movie is nine hours long. I mean, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I mean, there's so many. I don't know. I'll let you pick one and I'll roll with it. It's, it's a great trilogy. <laughs> so, yeah. so, that's that's actually the biggest proof. Information that, overload. That he didn't watch him was that he said it's a great trilogy. Yeah. It's a great one and two. Yeah. The third one stinks. So I'm gonna be. Uh, this is gonna be a, a hot. T- I've never seen The Godfather or or the second one. As an Italian? Yeah, I know. What the fuck? I know. It's. it's I'll I'll go home and watch it today. We you Goodfellas guy? Not really. Do I don't watch a lot of TV. Either? No, I've never seen that. Oh my god. I don't watch a lot of TV. Like I, I watch sports. I watch YouTube. Max, watch what movies. are you? I mean, Max, this is Italian discrimination by one of your own. That's gonna be disappointed in me. No, nah, it's all right. Hell yeah, man! Oh, you guys yeah. stick together. Max doesn't mean that. No, he's still trying no, to put in that Philly. I will uh, say, like, <laughs> no, I have. Godfather is like a thing that is on on in my house during Thanksgiving, like every year. But I don't know any. I don't like know it like bar for bar like that. Like I, I like I don't like sit down and watch it all the time. It's just always kind of on. It's like that's it's like shooter. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. hilarious yeah, that yeah. it's on. It's on. It's like yeah. no, actually every Thanksgiving like my like in between football games it's Godfather. <laughs> like every Thanksgiving. It's like the radio in your house. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's just background noise. Godfather. Yeah, you leave your house. You're like, oh, wait, you forgot to put off the Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, they used to run it on AMC during every, during every Thanksgiving, so it was an easy, like, flip back and forth. Like commercial, go to the Godfather, go back to the football game. Just catch three minutes. But then they stop. The yeah, but then they yeah. stop putting it on AMC. So we just we just run it. Like if there's if there's like a downtime in the football. I, I think what you're doing is smart, by the way, Alex. You're not. You're definitely not saying anything bad about LeBron today. Just in case. Not a great guy. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, this has been awesome, man. Well, I, Long I, overdue. One question, y'all. Are yeah. y'all are y'all made up after the? James. Yes. Was yeah. It was. I was a bitch. There was a lot of build up to that, but then we didn't get to see. Yeah. Well, he was. He was at the game. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. I was more mad. Yeah, I was, you were yelling at I that was, dude. That, that guy was a piece of shit. But he we made sounded fr- like we one. made friends. Later. I, I oh, was also. You? Yeah. Well, it's like have you ever had classic tough guy falling back scene. Yeah. He's yeah. Yelling at you to sit down, then you. He I did, was. He didn't think I was going to stand up. Yeah, to him. he didn't. Yeah. And then when I did, he kind of respected it. It's like you know, sometimes you butt heads with somebody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you become friends. I Jeez. also was Testing never you. mad at PFT. I was only mad at Hank. No, that's fair. Yeah, I remember because Hank it. is yeah. annoying. Yeah. And when his teams lose, he just doesn't talk. Well, so that was the part. Probably why he's been quiet today. Yeah, right. So actually, that's that's a good question. If you, how many players are there in the NBA that you could put on Wisconsin and win the national championship? Because they got beat you by probably a, need like three a twelve or four. seed. Probably. I will say I, I'm. It might have been me because <laughs> okay. I didn't. I didn't watch okay. Wisconsin play all year, and apparently you had a pretty good year. Uh-huh. Decent, decent. And then I watched the only game I watched all year was the worst. Yeah, it looks like so they it, didn't know how to play basketball. Yeah, it looked. Yeah. It was not great. No, it was not. That was probably the game that you're like, yeah, I can't watch college basketball. It was. Yeah. It was <laughs> the first half was tough. I mean, they didn't know how to play basketball. First half was tough. They were so bad. But yeah, it was only Hank because he's just like, he, yeah. when his teams lose, he like doesn't even watch. Yeah. No, I remember seeing some of the, uh, some of the live stream stuff from the first weekend. There was a lot of animosity in the. Yeah. It gets testy. The worse. The den. The better yeah. den. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you probably also saw the live streams this year in football season. You probably didn't see Hank. Yeah. The Patriots sucked. Mm-hmm. So he didn't watch. It's you nice. Know, you know, it's a clip I, I stumbled upon the other day was was Hank jumping into the pool and then running into the house. Yeah, That's Cowboys fan. Yep. <laughs> Slamming into the wall. And just yeah. Huge decrease. That's weird. He was a lot more lively when that team lost for him. <laughs> it was fun. You know, it had, to, had to make lemons out of, uh, lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> yeah. Well, Cowboys fans have been doing that for a while. Yeah. yeah. That's true. All right. Well, Caruso, thank you so much, man. Uh, awesome having you on. We got to have you back on. Hell yeah! Especially because you live not too far from here. Yeah, ten minutes. Been long overdue. We also got a. I, I know we're doing our court. We're doing a mini golf tournament next week, so they're changing it. But we have to come. Have you come and? Those are electric, by the way. I've watched those on YouTube. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're gonna do one all live next week. But we we should have you come and have me. Where are y'all doing it at the you. here? They're building it here. Oh, and here. Yeah, yeah. yeah if you want to oh, come do so. a practice round, you can yeah, you can. Yeah, well, yeah, if you're around, you can do a practice round. Yeah, what's, what's your game like? You get a yeah, pro. We'll do a pro am. Yeah. Better, I'm probably better at real golf than putt putt, but like I compete, you know. Yeah. You saw yeah, yeah Gauntlet. He he sees. Like, yeah, you I, you I, had a good you time. What was it two forty six? Two forty six. That's pretty good. That's yeah. Pretty damn good. He almost tripped over. The yeah, with the set. roughing the passer from the uh, yeah. the bags board. If you had yeah. gotten hurt, that would it would have been. Yeah, um, that would have been a tough sell. I just mm-hmm. had to move back to New York. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thanks so much, man. Appreciate. Yeah, appreciate it. it, guys. Thanks, man. Alex Caruso was brought to you by Cars.com. Cars.com is a leading digital marketplace that connects car shoppers with their perfect car, celebrating 25 years of helping shoppers research, find inventory, finance, and sell cars. Wherever life takes you next and whoever you're looking to be, there's a car for that on Cars.com. Up to 50,000 cars added daily to Cars.com. Shop over 2 million cars for 2 million possibilities. I'm getting an El Camino, and I'm getting it off Cars.com. Cars.com has so many options. No matter what you're looking for, you'll be able to find something that you want. Check it out for your next possibility in Cars.com. Where to next? Okay, let's wrap it up. We got Fire Fest of the Week. Hank? Yeah, my Fire Fest has uh, tried to you know, do something fun for the company. Got, got a got a mini golf tournament built. Some are saying it's only a day I have. That's fine. Um, <laughs> Who said that? Nick. He wrote an intro for it, and it's like, mini golf, the only idea Henry Locker's ever had. And I was like, oh, damn. I did the Alonzo Morning. Kind of hurts, yeah. yeah. But kind of true. It's kind of true. Um, But now I'm just getting heat because there's a bunch of dick holes. Yeah? Dick, dick Yeah, I mean, holes, you, which I didn't it was design, very foul. I didn't do the individual holes, done. and I probably, it's maybe a bit of an oversight, but there are probably five or six solid 
like the outline of the holes, dick holes look like yeah. dicks, yeah. you should call that uh, two men corner mm. if they're docking each other. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Hank also- It's the only good um, idea I've ever had. He's come up to me probably- <laughs> What are you going to say? I know what, what you're going to say. What do you think I'm going to say? About practicing? Yeah, so Hank yeah, has come up true. to me probably- That's true. I, I want to play. 10 times in the last <laughs> four days- Asking me the same question every single time, and I give him the same answer every time, and then he comes back to me like two hours later. He's like, "But what? what like maybe what if I could? What if we could practice more?" So the the issue is, a bunch of people are flying in for this. They're flying in late Tuesday. Mm -hmm. They only have a chance to practice once. Hank is like, "But can everyone else just practice before that?" And I'm like, "No. If we're gonna do it, you know that people will complain if everyone gets to, if people get to practice more than others." Well, Hank would never do that at a mini golf tournament. Right. Get there early. And he keeps coming up to me asking me if like there's any way that other people, Hank, can practice more. And I'm like, "We have to keep it consistent." And he just thinks that like I'm gonna change my answer depending on the day hank's definitely going to practice late at night he's going to sneak back in we need to we need no. to check out the security, we have security. I, I won't no I, I play by the rules this if you really want to get a peek inside my mind it's i understand and i respect uh the decision and i understand why it happened <laughs> but my but, and it's going up against me. it's going up against dave ryan whitney and kirk minahan who are impossible to argue with my hope a little bit maybe was like maybe big cat will fight the fight for me and then i can kind of get in his ear like you know dream on green yeah, yeah. No. but that that but i've i've tested the waters and big cat just, many no. times but many times you said what, what motivation do you think big cat would have to like go to he wants to practice i do i know and that's my i'm saying like that's oh you hoping. thought i did oh. maybe that's, no one practice no, is more like, than enough honestly hank the, the correct thought about this tournament is i don't care if i practice before right then. We're gonna go out there. We're gonna. Well, play just, I don't want to practice to win. I just want it's fun. Like we have a mini golf course set up. Like I want to play. You practice. You want to practice to win. I don't care as much about winning as much as like when we have a mini golf course in the office. Like I am a child. I'm like well, I want to play with yeah. this mini golf course. Yeah, but it's fine. I but it is I that that wolf. might just be my fire press. Hank just keeps asking me the same question. I keep giving him the same answer. Then he comes back and he's like, "But what about?" Thankfully, we we're gone. I will practice. say that too. We're gone this weekend. Otherwise. Intrusive thoughts made of you would have been here practicing yeah. <laughs> for sure, hundred percent. You'd be here, but we're, I think you've I actually. No I think you've already practiced. I haven't secretly. No, I respect. I respect the rules. I've just been maybe lobbying. Uh, swear to God, you haven't practiced yet. Swear to God, you I haven't taken a. I'm not time. going to. I understand how much people are going to bitch about this, so I have not. I've just been trying to maybe change legislation, you know, in the court, mm -hmm. unsuccessfully. Unsuccessfully, you. I still. I, I'm definitely getting asked that at least two more times. No, it's all, we're not going to be back. By the time we're back, it's practice round day. Yeah, but you're going to be like, oh, I practiced once, but can I practice again? No, no, the, it's over. It's we're, We've made it. We're, our flight's tonight. We're good. We're, we're done practicing. Yeah. Did Hank design this entire tournament just so that he could practice mini golf? Yes. No, it's just it was a good idea I had. And <laughs> just mini keep, golf. Keep he hits it. the mini golf yeah. button. Hank, well, how, what ideas you got? Mini golf. It's going to be or. Great. Mega golf, mega. Golf, Ooh, I like mega which golf, which is just regular golf. Oh no, mega golf. no, but it's got to be bigger than regular with, golf. with bigger holes. Yeah, longer, longer holes, bigger holes. Yeah, bigger clubs. That would be fun. Yeah, I would play mega golf. Mega golf for would sure. be awesome. But yeah, the uh, so next week is going to be great. We're gonna, Wednesday will be uh, Wednesday morning will be round one. When, Wednesday afternoon will be round two. Then a cut. Wednesday night prime time will be round three. And then we're saving the final round for Thursday night after the Masters. So people don't have to choose between us and the Masters. I think we'd probably lose that fight. Mm -hmm. BFT. Um, speaking of changing legislation, Hank, uh, my fire fest of the week is that Billy football is running for Congress. So uh, what started out as encouraging Billy to run for George Santos' seat, or excuse me, run against George Santos uh, for Congress, is turned into Billy seriously doing – uh, a campaign to get elected to New York's third district to the point where today he was interviewed on Fox News. I thought he did well on Fox News. Yeah. Uh, I thought he did a pretty good job, mm -hmm. uh, all things considered. She, the, the lady came after him right off the start and yep. said, like, you're not really running. No, I, I regret to inform you, Billy Football is 100% legitimately running for this seat. And uh, my fire fest is that I feel like Oppenheimer, that uh, by, by putting this into motion, 
I've affected the course of the United States for the foreseeable future. Yeah, it's scary. It's a scary thought. It also, it, it would be the perfect ending to like a, a part of my take documentary where it shows like, where are they now? Like at the end of Animal House. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, Big Cat, PFT, Hank are doing this. Billy Football went on to serve eight terms in Congress and is now running for vice president. Yeah. Like I could see that, I could see that scenario panning out. Um, he is taking it seriously. So uh, if you want to read more about Billy running for Congress, go to Bill Cotter for Congress.com, I guess. Yeah. I could see Billy, maybe the story ends like Billy gets elected to Congress and then creates a law that bans podcasting and shuts oh, it down yeah. forever. Oh, yeah. Or podcast libraries. Yeah. So he's I, like, you, you can only have your podcast live for 24 hours. So you're a podcaster. You're a criminal. Yeah. I would actually take it one step further, Hank. I would say that he could put us all in prison. Yeah. Like I'm rooting Billy's I, Billy's ultimate revenge is just throwing us into a CIA black site. I'm rooting for Billy to get to a point where he has to debate and then I'm also rooting for Billy to win and then some big scandal takes him down. Like I want him to just live the George Santos story arc. Yeah. Be perfect. Except he's he's stealing frogs from because veterans. Then, and then he would also just make us call him like Congressman Bill Cotter for the rest of his life. Mm, I yeah, that'd be funny. Yeah. I also hope that this ends it, it'd be awesome if like he lost, but then he did like election fraud and like campaigned for like four years to try to get the results overturned. Yeah. Because somebody screwed him over of his votes. It's gonna it's gonna be sad. And we also found out his middle name's Biddle. Yeah. That was a shocker. I still can't believe it. I, I can't believe it. Bad job on our part not uncovering that years ago. Biddle. And you know that Billy's going to be like, don't make fun of it. It's my mom's like, you know, name from some English old person. Like, But it's still Biddle. Yeah. That's, and it, it, it's not like that's a weird name. It's the fact that it's Billy Biddle. Yeah. That's the weird part. Yeah. It's not a normal name. No, it's not. No, but you know, you know his answer would be that, like English something or other. Yeah, this, I want him to win. I, I he, listen. He he's running on common sense. Dudes can't buy houses anymore. Let's fix that. Uh, I think the article that was written about him. He's like everyone can see there's problems, and I see these problems at mm -hmm. face value. His and that was it. That was it. But he sees the problems. So his website, which is this is Bill Cotter for Congress 1.0, 2.0 will be coming out later, where it kind of expands on his his basic talking points for his campaign. But his campaign is. Uh, I like the good things. Yeah. So if you like good stuff, then I'm a good guy to vote into office. Remember when life rocked? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm i proud of Billy for taking it seriously, but at the same time, I'm like, dear God. No, I mean, the craziest part about He's all He's worked this... more in three weeks on yeah. this campaign than he did his entire career Correct. on this he, podcast. He literally said that. Yeah. He said, I've never worked harder <laughs> than I have over the past week. It also is, it, it's a st it's a sad state of like uh, American politics that like I saw, Bi I've read everything Billy's written and I've saw, I saw him on, on TV and I was like, he's actually not a bad option. He but, isn't. I honestly don't think he's that bad of an option. He would not be the most incompetent Congress. Right, exactly. That's that. Yeah. So I'm without a doubt. I'm getting, I'm inching closer and closer to a full endorsement. I haven't gotten there yet because he's running up against a guy named Jim Toes. So I want to see what Jim Toes has to say. But uh, we're getting closer to a, a full Billy endorsement for me. Yep. Yeah. It's uh, it's something. It's something to take in. I hope. I hope we also get to a point where it's like that. We have to like. He gets the delegation of the Riders and Jerry's Army and the Minifans. Like he's got to, he's got to actually like pander for the endorsement. The, the best part of the interview was today when they asked him if he would, if he is supporting Donald Trump for president. Yeah, and he goes, "Yes, I would accept Donald support, Donald Trump's support if he gave it to me." Yeah, he flipped it on him. Yeah, like Billy, you can't teach that. No, you can't. But yeah, the, the, like w you know when it used to be that like, ooh, the Washington Post has decided who they're they're backing. Yeah, I need that for like Jerry's Army has come to their decision yep the minna fans are ready to say who they are backing so this this concerns me a little bit max just brought up jim toes's website yeah so billy's running on a common sense platform oh no jim toes platform is <laughs> oh no it is hardcore common sense that's way more common sense billy how can you get more hardcore than hardcore you can't Hardcore common sense. The about, fact that he spells his name like actual toes. Yeah, I was just assuming it was like Jonathan Taves. No, his name. No, his, his name Jim Toes literally means <laughs> athlete's foot. So Billy's got to go mega hardcore common sense. Yeah, hardcore common sense beats common sense every day. Foot fetish. What about hardcore common sense? What about N NSFW common sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's so common sense you won't even be able to show your, your colleagues. Yeah. 
<laughs> his name translates to foot sex. This guy also does he Wait, live what in part the, of Jim? Is that does he live in the district? Dick. He lives in the district. Uh, oh, That's Jim, a problem. Jimmy so. Toes. I yeah, that or athlete's foot. If it's GYM. True. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my fire fest. Have is, you contributed to Billy football for Congress? I haven't decided yet. I haven't. I haven't yet. Yeah. I also think that he probably doesn't have his like financial setup that like I would assume that I would just get robbed. Yeah. I think he probably would just get recurring payments from me. Yeah. This is. It, it is very similar to the plot line of Jonah and Veep. Yeah. Yeah. I also I have to watch my finances because I don't know if you know it's hogs for the cause season so I got hit up pretty hard. I did know that. Yeah. Yeah, I got hit who, up pretty hard. Who hits you up this year? Uh, Ben Mintz. Okay. Yeah. So it's co- it's costly being his friend. Very costly. Uh, my fire fest. Oh, actually, I, I've had a pretty good week, but uh, we have to we, we have our wings date with uh, Stanford Steve. We don't have a wings place, so anyone who's in Arizona, tell me the best oh, wings. Oh, I got one. Oh, okay, so then I, I don't got have one. Fire I got a really good one. Yep. I don't say it. Okay. Also, I got an email from my daughter's school that said that there was a bout of diarrhea going around, and if you have three diarrheas, you're out for the day. And I was like, that would suck if we had that here. That's a lot of diarrhea. I'd yeah. be out. Yeah, <laughs> we'd all be out. out. <laughs> I saw that email. I was like, wait, they have a three strike diarrhea. Is the uh, policy that's wild crazy yeah. wasn't my daughter so but still like just the idea of being anywhere where three diarrheas would get me kicked out i i would be scared to go anywhere swimming pool swimming pool is like if you hot had, tubs yeah if you've had diarrhea within the last year you're not oh yeah hot tubs i don't listen that's not hot tub is pretty much a bath yeah and that it does say don't if you come in here don't have diarrhea it's like bro i always have diarrhea so that's not we're not doing that uh all right jake finish us off yeah, on a similar note, uh, the other day I was in the bathroom and the lights just went off. Yeah, the lights, oh yeah. they do that when there's not enough movement. So I was mm-hmm. sitting too long and it just got pitch black and I had to turn on my flashlight. Oh, no. Yeah, that's rough. That's rough. It's happened to me a couple times. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah that's when you, we need to you change those scoring. timers. It's very yeah. quick. Yeah, it's just hanging out. You're hanging out too long. Yeah. I'm pooping in here. But and it's nice when somebody walks in and you're just like, thank you. Yeah. I kind of like pooping in the dark. Yeah, but you got to clean up. You want to unpack that real quick? There's something about just like... <laughs> you just don't want to see yourself? Yeah. 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 I, I can yes, see that. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. And you can focus. Right. Like, I've done it in my my like apartment before. Just like it's dark. I'll just... I am pooping. You straight oh, yeah. Like if, you, if you wake up in the middle of the night, you have to shit. Yeah. I never turn the lights yes, on. Yes, exactly. That'll wake you up. Yes. Yeah. Seeing yourself does suck. I actually... Uh, a real fire fest, I have not... Uh, gotten the toenail polish off my toes from arch madness a month ago and every morning i wake up and i'm like oh fuck and i'm just too lazy i just don't how, how much toe nail polish is still on there all of it are you serious i that yeah that's all of it. i just assumed that it <laughs> faded away paint? no uh, you can use i my wife gave me the toenail polish remover and i started to do it and it took fucking forever and i just gave up and i was like i'll just I don't know. I guess next time I go to a pool, it's going to be, I guess we could, yeah, I probably could, this could be a problem this weekend. Yeah. Uh, Max. Although maybe it's just Caleb Williams. Caleb Caleb Williams. Max, do you take your shirt off when you poop? Never. Never. You seem like a guy who would. No, I, I try to keep my shirt on. As, all the time, as <laughs> often as possible. It's yeah. That's another thing. Sometimes I'll shower in the dark because I, you know, I don't want to see myself. That's dangerous. That's not you fully dark. Shower in the dark? Not fully it's dark. It's kind of relaxing, actually. Well, it's like if it's daytime and I don't have windows, but like I'll like open my door a little bit and then the the natural light will come through. Yeah, like a tiny bit of light in yes, the shower. Yeah, like a it's, tiny it's, bit of light it in is, the shower. It's like it's a meditation. Nice. It's central. like relax. Yeah, yeah it's, it's relaxing. All right. Good show, boys. Numbers. Eight. Three. Forty. Eighteen. I go seventy-seven. 99 Pug. Good luck to Pug and Seton Hall tonight. Trying 20. To win the I almost never said it. That would have been brutal. 56. 56. That's 56. the first one I won on. You didn't win. Love or, you guys. Yeah, at the old office, I guess. Doesn't count.